Shout out to everybody already in the comment section, man. Shout out to my brother Jonathan, Maurice, James, James Lillard, Balboa Raider, man. Appreciate you guys for being here. Darren, Big Dad, what's up with you, my brother, man? Make sure you guys wipe them feet. That means hit them thumbs up. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. That helps the channel a lot, you guys. I appreciate you guys for being here. This show is a little different for those who are new to the channel. This is new. I mean, this is different. We're not doing the typical uh, Raiders talk. We're just talking to our Raiders brothers and sisters. And even any of anybody else that comes in, man, is dealing with depression, anxiety, PTSD, um, bipolar, whatever it is you deal with, man, I would love to hear your guys' stories. Uh, what we're going to do tonight is Stu will be here in a second. I want him to tell his story um, a little bit about his battles with uh, mental health. I'm going to speak about mine because as of late, I've dealt with mine um, a lot, especially these past few weeks. It's been really, really tough, y'all. Um, and I'm going to put the link in the comments, I mean, uh, in the comment section. And if, if one or two, maybe even three people want to pull in tonight and just give their testimony, um, that would be great. I would, I would definitely love that. If you don't want to, trust me, I get it. Everybody's not ready to show their face and speak their truth, but you guys can always have those side conversations in the chat. And I'm definitely going to respond to as much as I can. Um, you already know what it is, man. Much love and respect to every single one of you guys for being here. This is a different show. I'm not expecting a million people to be here tonight. This isn't going to be the thousand people in the chat kind of show. And I'm cool with that. Cause to be honest with you, this show is a lot more um, personal and um, yeah, man, we here to talk about it, man. Like I said, I've been dealing with some shit these past few weeks. Um, when winter approaches, when it starts to get a little more gray outside, um, it's kind of a reminder to me, you know what I'm saying, of, of all the people I've lost, um, estranged relationships, you know what I mean? Just, just a lot of different shit that I deal with and I've dealt with my whole life. So like I said, you guys, no judgment here. We're just here to talk about it. Let's just talk about it. Shout out to my brother Squid, man. My brother. Shout out to Dirty Raider. My brother, man. You know, I love you guys to death. Um, Terrence, my brother, man. I want you guys to understand also, me changing my number is nothing personal. Like I said, I'm just going through a change um, in my life. You know what I mean? And definitely uh, my loved ones will be getting that text with my line. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and we'll definitely catch up here soon. But um, let's get some comments in the comment section, man. Let's definitely get them in. I want to see what you guys have going on. Shout out to my brother One Up for being brave enough to speak his truth. I'm six years sober off meth, but I struggle with alcohol. Let me tell you something, my brother. That's a blessing. Meth is a terrible drug, and that is something that is very, very difficult from what I'm told to get over. I've been to AA meetings. And I've seen people um, talk about their stress and, 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 and their problematic, uh, 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 you know what I mean, situations they deal with with meth. So for you to be six years sober off that, that is a huge, huge accomplishment, my brother. Um, the, the, the thing is, right, all of us who have addictive personalities, we usually put down one thing and pick something else up, right? That's usually how it happens, right? So our brother one up basically said, you know what, I'm going to put the meth down. And I'm going to pick the alcohol up. Um, that's that's what happens, bro. When we all have that addictive personality, whether it be I quit drinking and I start eating a bunch of sugar or I, I you know, when I quit drinking alcohol for a year and a half, I picked up coffee more. I, I drank pretty much three, four, five coffees a day. Right. We all deal with it. We all deal with it, man. We just have to learn. Um, we have to find these outlets. That's what I say, one up. We have to find outlets. Like this right here to me is an outlet. I can talk about my problems. I can talk about everything I'm dealing with with you guys because we all need an outlet, right? Whether it's the gym, um, you know, whether it's just uh, working on your diet, eating better, just anything you can find, writing, journaling, whatever you can do, music, whatever you can find in order to keep your mind off the alcohol or anything else like that, man, just do it. And if you need any type of help, my brother, definitely reach out to me. There's so many different triggers, man. You know what I mean? As of late, I've had a lot of people reach out to me um, in, in, my, in my inbox on Twitter, 
on Instagram. A lot of people hit me up saying that they've been thinking about suicide, um, harming themselves. This is why we're here. We definitely want to talk about this shit, man. Yeah, T, podcasting as well. This is my outlet. You know what I'm saying? But if any of you guys are thinking of anything dark, anything crazy, trust and believe, man, reach out to the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. It's down here at the bottom, 800 273 8255 is down here at the bottom. You guys can definitely reach out to my brother, Raider Squid. Um, he's always down to talk. Um, anybody off the ledge, he deals with his stuff as well. Um, anybody, man, like, don't ever feel like you can't reach out to me um, at all because I'm definitely here. And trust me, man, I have my people I reach out to as well, right? I definitely have people that I reach out to as well because I deal with my shit. You know what I mean? The thing that sucks is, I was just telling my wife this, right? The people that I grew up with, I can't talk to them about my mental health because we all grew up doing the same shit and it was just normal, right? It's just normal to us. Growing up how we grew up, you know, growing up without pops around on drugs or, or moms not being around or this, this or that, it's just, it's normal to us. So all, all of my brothers that I grew up with, whether it be my brother L Fingers, uh, my brother Steel, uh, a bunch of other guys, my brother Ant, they deal with their shit in their own ways, whether they internalize it or alcohol, you know, we, whatever the hell it is, you know what I'm saying? We all deal with this shit a different way. Me personally, I have to talk about it because if I don't talk about it, I'm going to start living inside of my head. And that's when I start going into a room and hiding from the world. And I don't want to do that. I can't afford to do that. I got a wife and kids. They need me. I, I you know I mean? I can't, I definitely can't just fall off the globe because I actually have a full fledged family to take care of. You feel me? So it is what it is, man. But yeah, lately, bro, the anxiety has been crazy. Um, depression has been creeping in and out. Um, I just want you guys to know, man, you guys have a brother in me, regardless if it's for Raiders, anxiety, depression, whatever the hell it is. If you guys need to talk, man, you definitely can talk to me. Jonathan, I seen that brother. I seen that. I seen that AJ Brown had suicidal thoughts and this is a millionaire. You guys, this is a professional athlete that you would think has everything together. It's not always what it looks like. It's definitely not what it always looks like. Shout out to AJ Brown for speaking his truth. And um, I'm still reaching out to other guys, you guys to try to get on the show and tell their testimonies. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to our brother James. He said, I've been sober off the weed, vape, alcohol for three years. It was hard to get off, but I did it. Shout out to you, my brother. I appreciate you for sharing your testimony. I'm very proud of you. And if you ever feel like you got about to go back down that, down that, you know what I mean? Down that path, reach out to me, King, and we can definitely talk about it, man. Bugsy, definitely, brother. Definitely. They're real. They're definitely 100%. Yeah, 100% definitely real, man. Definitely real. I feel, I feel for anybody that deals with anything like that, man. For real. I am 46 and I started when I was 16 and quit 2014. Shout out to you, brother. You pretty much what? Seven years? Seven years clean? That's huge. That is huge, my brother. Shout out to James Moore, man. Money is seldom a factor. Greg, this is facts. Facts. Um, Keeks, it can be for certain people, right? For me, it's not because I have addicted personality. If I start smoking, I'm going to start drinking. You know what I'm saying? So, but for some people that is, you know what I mean? It helps with anxiety. It helps with the depression. It helps with a lot of shit. You know what I mean? With me, I'm just not one of the type of people. Weed to me is something that I smoke, I'm about to drink. You know what I'm saying? So it just kind of goes hand in hand with me. And then with weed, I just, me personally, I don't even like that high. Like that's not something for me. I over, I overthink everything. You know what I mean? But for those who can do that, shout out to you more, 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 uh, you know what I mean? I love it. I love it. You know what I mean? As long as you just using it to keep your anxiety in check, using it to keep your depression in check, not over, you know, abusing it and, and, and being non-productive. You know what I mean? Because that's what happens sometimes when you dip into this shit. You know what I mean? You, you, it's, it happens. You know what I mean? You start smoking, you, you sleep until two in the afternoon, you wake up like, holy shit, your body starts getting away from you. Your mind starts getting away from you. As long as you're productive and you can handle yourself accordingly with we, I have no problem or no issue with that at all, my brother. Shout out to Keeks, man. Um, that Raiders fan says, I always uh, dealt with anxiety and depression. My brother, man, me too. So I feel for you, King. I definitely feel for you. I've dealt with this since I was a kid. I just didn't, you know, back then, we didn't know how to identify what it was. There was no name for it. You know what I'm saying? There was no mental health. 
basically us growing up, it was, man, get over that shit. That's what it was for us, right? In our era, I'm 37 years old. Pretty much what it was is get over that, stop crying, stop acting like a bitch, right? Let's just be honest. That's what it was. Now we have something that we can put it under an umbrella, mental health, or there's a bunch of different branches, you know, or a tree that has a bunch of different branches to it, whether it's anxiety, PTSD, bipolar, whatever it is. Now we finally have something that falls under a whole, a whole thing of mental health. You know what I mean? So it's a blessing to know that we can identify something now and we're not, and, and we're not, um, we're definitely not being judged as much as, as we used to be. You know what I'm saying? We're not judged as, as much as we used to be. It used to be, bro. Quit acting like a hoe. You know what I mean? Quit acting like this. Quit acting like that. And you know what's, you know what's funny, Terrence? I had a feeling, my brother, that you dealt with social anxiety, right? I didn't say anything, but I, want, I was waiting for you to say that. And that's why I never rushed you to get on the show. Never rushed you to do any of that. But guess what, my brother? I'm proud of you because you overcame that hump. Every time I turn around, there's somebody else going live. And my brother, my brother Terrence is on there, right? I, I love it. I just seen uh, our brother Raider Joe doing a live with OG Daniel. Terrence is right there with him, right? Whatever, whatever helps you, my brother, to, 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 to keep yourself together, I'm all for it. And to be honest, you're conquering social anxiety every day, whether you believe it or not. Because now you're in front of hundreds, thousands of people. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's be honest, man. What, the last fan show we did, I think we had about 7,000 people watch the show. So Terrence, you're talking in front of 7,000 people, my brother. You know what I mean? And I'm proud of you, bro, for real. To be able to overcome that, I'm definitely proud of you, my brother. Shout out to my little bro, Diego, man. Um, I really love to meet up with you. If you come back to the 916, brother, I will be out there. I promise you in the next three to four weeks, I will be home. I definitely will be home. Uh, my biggest enemies are my thoughts. I'm always in a constant battle with myself. My brother, welcome to the club, brother. That's why we're all here to talk about it, because I definitely live inside my head. You know what I mean? I definitely live inside my head. And um, it can be tough. You know what I mean? It takes it takes away from my kids sometimes. It takes away from my wife because I'm so sometimes I want to just go high. You know what I mean? And just get away from shit because my mind is just do, 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 do. You know what I mean? So, um, brother, thank you for uh, sharing your testimony. We're definitely going to link up and definitely talk, man. We're definitely going to talk. Um, Big uh, big docs real quick, bro. I know you on the roll, but where did you get that hoodie? Keep doing your thing, bro. You bring more than football to the table. Much love. Pause. My brother, man. I'm actually going to put up a link here soon, you guys. Um, shout out to Autumn Abyss. This is uh, one of my um, new people that I'm working with, um, a new company. Shout out to them. They have a great website. I'll have a link here soon, you guys, to put up. And once I do, you guys can go over there and get and get a percentage off of it. Um, they're doing great work over there. Shout out to Autumn Abyss, um, most definitely. But we not, you know, I'm not here to, to promote anything tonight. I just wanted to wear it because I just liked how it looked. You know what I'm saying? Um, shout out to our brother, man, Stu. Man, what's going on with you, my brother? <clears throat> All right. How's the internet? It's a little foggy, but it's coming kind of in and out a little bit, though. Um, why don't you just use your phone? When you used it earlier, it looked really good. Son of a bitch, 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 bitch. I don't know bitch, what's going on, bitch. but it usually looks really good. Well, these past I few days, it's been kind of just like in and out. It's hit or miss, dude. I don't get it. Yeah. And I even got like a, I got a, like a, it's called My Mesh. And it takes like the internet and brings it down and, and uh, allows me to, so that it like extends it. Yeah, and I was, went through and was going through it and and like checking the levels and all that shit. How about now? Is it still laggy? Well, you know the good thing is we can hear you, we can see. Is you. it still is it still laggy? It's just a little foggy, but we but you're not you're not lagging though. Like we can hear you. You're not breaking up or nothing. Okay, okay. Hold on, one, 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 one. You know what's one, funny? One. The more when you get closer to the camera, it looks good, and then you back up, and it gets really. Um, oh really? Yeah, that, like right there. Boom! Now you look kind of. And then you come closer, and it's like a little more, a little more in focus. Okay. While, while, well, Stu, while, Stu, while Stu works on that, I'm going to get a couple questions in, you guys. Shout out to Squid, man. Uh, it's been uh, taught that your worst enemy couldn't harm you as much as your own wicked thoughts. RZA. Facts, Squid. Facts, my brother. This is definitely facts, my brother. Shout out to my brother Squid for always supporting the channel, always coming with some knowledge and wisdom, um, especially on the mental health topic, man. Like I said, you guys, if you guys want to, 
you're ever going through something, reach out to our brother Raider underscore, underscore squid on IG, and he'll definitely answer every message that he gets because he's really, really good at that. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to my brother Squid, man. Um, Michael Dawson. Let me see. I've never heard of that, Vincent. I've never heard of that. Doc, you ever think of me, um, a micro dosing shrooms? Doesn't change you mentally, just changes your brainwave patterns. I become more of the person I want to be. Shit, Vincent, I may look into that. I, mean, I, I just can't, I can't deal with stuff that takes me um, to another <laughs> realm. You know what I mean? Definitely can't do that. Um, shout out to Jonathan. What triggers my anxiety and depression is college, Docs. What what about it, John? Like what 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 about college brings? What what about it? What, tell me that. Like, look, give me a little bit more because I know Jonathan is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this show today. Because he's definitely been reaching out to me as a late saying he needs a, he needs one of these shows. So I definitely want to know what what what's going on with you, brother. Talk talk with your brothers and sisters. Let's definitely get it in. Um, let me see. Ruckus says, my boy's wife does that and swears it works. Shit. I've never done it. I just know I'll probably freak out. <laughs> Stu, can, can you hear us, brother? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. So let me let me ask you this, man. We got you here tonight. We're talking about something more serious. This is no football talk. Um, I know with your story, a little bit of it aligns with football. You know what I'm saying? Of course. But... um. Let's talk about, you know what I'm saying? I've, I've kind of let everybody know my story. I think people who've listened to the music as well kind of get an idea of where I come from and, and certain things that, you know, trigger me. And, you know, what, what, is, what is your story with mental health, my brother? Like, like give us an insight, you know what I'm saying, on what you deal with on a daily. I know we spoke the other day, right? And I, I told, like, the people don't understand because people say that Stu never sleeps, right? And they start thinking, like, Wild shit, like he's on drugs. Oh, I, oh, I know. They think I'm on drugs and all yeah, that yeah, yeah. shit. And, but, but, yeah. but you told me something that tripped me out, right? We talked on the phone about a couple of weeks ago, and, and this stuck with me. Um, I told you that I've been having like these elusive dreams, right? And, mm -hmm. and it's been difficult to sleep lately. And you said, bro, why do you think I don't sleep? You, you, you was like, it's very hard. The shit that happens with me when I go to sleep is like kind of like low-key unbearable, right? Like you just- yeah. You're trying to stay up as much as possible so you don't have to deal with the torment yes. that you're dealing with when you sleep. Yeah, so so with that, like I said, um, I guess I'll start with that. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of work my way back, but with-, with You with start wherever you want. The, the anxiety and the depression and uh, the PTSD, uh, probably the last three years, I mean, me and my wife- rarely sleep in the same bed because I'm, I'm constantly moving around. I'm punching shit or, I mean, you know, where she's, she's laying here and we're, you know, spooning or whatever. And all of a sudden I'll start like just choking her. You know what I mean? Oh, and she's like, do, 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 do. you know, like yeah. wake up and then, or where I'm, I'm like almost like I'm running. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm rolling off the bed and, you know, she works. So the last thing I want to do is keep her up because yeah. then I can't sleep either because I'm worried about waking her up and shit. So usually I'll start in the bed, then I go to a couch, then I go downstairs on the couch, then I go to the futon, then I go to the basement. So I, I'm constantly up and down. But yeah. And when I do fall asleep, the dreams that I have are so real that it's not even like I slept Yeah, because I am like in my dream, really going through what's ever in my dream. Right. Yeah. Like I never get in that REM sleep. Yeah. So for me with my depression and sleeping, for instance, if I'm in, a, if I'm, if I'm on a low, you know what I mean? Where I'm just not motivated. I'm motivated to get done what I need to get done at the house and with my kids yeah, but I, I ain't checking my email. I'm not checking my text messaging. I'm not answering phone calls. I'm not coming on live, um, because if I all of a sudden see 10, 10 text messages, that turns into twenty. Twenty yeah. turns into thirty, and then yeah. I'm like, I'm not dealing with the you know, pile of mail stacked up. 
So I may go, you know, I've gone six or seven days where I don't talk to you or I don't talk to, to anybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. So then I kind of, I mean, it, it's, it's not like manic depressive, but I'll get in a manic stage where, you know, I may take an Adderall and yeah. because I want to, I want to like, I want to go through my mail or I want to go through my emails. I want to, like I call it my motivation or once I get in those moods and I'm talkative, I'm like, you know what, here's the deal. I know I'm not going to sleep. So what good is it to me to sit in the bed, tossing and turning? I'm like, I might as well just get up, get some shit done, you know, get on here and talk because this is therapy for me. So yeah. I'd rather stay up than try to sit there and sleep, not sleeping, driving myself crazy that rather than just getting up, staying up for 48 hours and then crashing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, but I've always been a guy that, that's been able to, to, um, uh, uh, be able to not perform, but to with low sleep. You know what I mean? Yes. To to um, what's the word? But, I'm but, but what happens though? What happens when your body and your mind like catches up? Like how when the no sleep catches up today? It, it just doesn't happen. Wait, say that again. Say that again. So, so so like when you when you go on those those benders where you can't where you don't sleep, right? Where you just, just no. you refuse to sleep. What what happens? Like, is there anything mentally? Or anything like 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 physically that happens that changes where it's like okay like does your body kick into like overdrive where it's like oh my god I haven't had sleep so long oh. that like you just kind of turn into a different person no 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 you're just no. so I used mean, to just not sleeping that it's just it is what it I is. mean for I remember before like I need I needed to have I've I've been on so many different medications for sleep at one point for four or five years, I was taking fucking Ambien, which is like yeah. terrible for you. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. I didn't realize that you can withdraw from it. I would, I would go cold Turkey. I would, then I would, you know, and you, you can actually go through withdrawal. And there were sometimes I'd take three to four uh, Ambien's during the night and nothing, yeah. just nothing, you know? So um, my body never really, gets to the point where it's like, you could tell, you know what I mean? I've, I've always been able to mask it, hide it. You know, I need a fan to sleep. I, I mean, it was before it was a fan completely dark, yeah. you know? Um, but I remember on road trips, like in college, for instance, that I remember this specifically in 2002 going to Iowa uh, when they actually, I think it went 11 and 0 with Banks was their quarterback at Iowa. And I can remember literally, and my roommate, Ralph Turner, as soon as his head hit the pill, boom, he's out. I was so jealous of him, right? Yeah. I can just remember looking, midnight, 1.30, 2.30, yeah. 3.30, literally didn't sleep. And we got up. We had to get up at 6 o'clock because it was a noon game. But since it was in central time, it was actually at 11. And I played that game, played a good game. But literally, I did not fucking sleep. Yeah. I'm just sitting there. My mind's going, my mind's racing. So I've learned now that when I'm tired, I'm tired. And when I'm awake, I'm awake. So if I'm awake, I'm going to get shit done while I'm in that mood. What, what is your, what does your wife ever tell you the lack of sleep, how it affects you from what she sees? No, no, nope. no. Nope. I mean, that's the thing, man. I, I, when I, when I was working, when I was doing um, my, uh, my, when I was working for ESPN and doing the high school game of the week yeah. and just my business partners there, I'd say, man, I, you know, I haven't slept in like two days and yeah. they're like, dude, you look fucking, what are you talking about? If I, if I didn't sleep, I wouldn't be, I fucking, I wouldn't even know how to function properly. And I just would, I can just push through it. You so know let, me, let me ask you this though. Okay. So, we know you deal with, you know, depression, you, the anxieties and all that good shit. Does, does anything, does, what, when did, when does, do you ever think any, well, when does the negative thoughts ever occur? Did, do you have any negative thoughts that pop up where you're just like, why am I here questioning? Like, is there anything? I will, I, I, I would, I would have, I remember like around when my, when I, I when I started to know some differences in my brain around 32, 33, the way mm -hmm. I just, 
I would get this feeling of guilt. Like, like I did something wrong and I didn't, but I would feel like I did something wrong. Okay. And it was just like that, that feeling of like, uh, and I, sometimes again, I would have dreams where, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm beating somebody up. I'm killing somebody yeah. or my wife leaves me or a kid, one of my kids dies and dude for like 30 minutes, it's so real that I have to like, did this, did it happen? Was this, is that real? And I'm feeling that way that you would feel if it really happened to you, you know? So yeah, I wouldn't say I, I felt any like where I, I wanted to kill myself. Not, not in that moment. I have been issues with that where, but that was more or less of me just really, um, kind of just feeling sorry for myself. You was, know it, was it like, were you feeling outside of your family purposeless? Is that kind of maybe the term? Well, it, it was, I didn't, I didn't find, I didn't have joy in anything. Yeah. I didn't have joy in anything, you know, yes. nothing excited me. Yeah. It was food lost its flavor. Uh, my appetite was gone. Um, I just, it was, and it's, this sounds crazy. I mean, it sounds like, a, like I said, a, a, a sociopath where I am showing emotion because I know this is the type of emotion people are expecting, but I don't feel that emotion. Yes. Hey, Widow. Um, Shout out to our sister, Black Widow. I definitely got to get you back on one of these Mental Health Mondays. I would love to have you back on, sis. Shout out to her. her I, I, I got I, I to get back. I got to get on Black Widow singing, and get Black Widow on my show too, man. Yeah. Widow, whenever you want to pull up, you just let me know and I'll definitely send you the link. Me, her, and Squid were the ones that started that on this channel. You know what I mean? So shout out to well, Widow. Well, here's the thing. Mental, mel mental health in this country is, is – it's we're so behind and it's, it, it's such a hard thing for people because you can't see it. You can't yeah. see the disability. You know, my sister has MS. You can see she has a disability. Yeah. Someone who has diabetes, you see that, you know, they're, they're, they're taking this medication. Someone that has, um, um, uh, you know, cancer. Someone who has, um, you know, if they, ha if they lost a leg, yeah. you can see that. But for people with mental health issues, um, sometimes it's it just always – and that was the other thing, too. I'm sitting here going – Something's not right, you know. And my yeah. wife's going, Stuart, what the fuck? Like, you're this is out of character from you. Why are you doing this? And I'm going, she's confused. I'm confused because my brain is a different fucking brain. Yeah. I operated and did things for 33, 34 years a certain way. And then all of a sudden, in a matter of a couple of weeks, like literally your brain changes and you are a different person. Yeah. So it was that feeling of just like, um, not not really. Oh how did you say it? Um, just not motivated. Yeah. Just, just it's, like. That, but that's what's so crazy about your story, right? Because when I feel not motivated, I sleep. I'm like dead to the world. So for you, I feel like that's even worse because you deal with it up. So you're you're dealing with being unhappy at all times. You know what I'm saying? Like, at least I can dip off and hide, go in my room and lay down and sleep for 10, 12 hours. I, no, I do that. I, dude, I, I, I do do that. Okay. I do okay. do that. Like, I might, when, when you don't see me on here, I am completely, I, I have a routine from when I get up with my kids, with cleaning, with yeah. running, with lifting, with when they come home, making dinner, getting them dressed, with taking my Epsom salt bath. Listen to my iPod and dude, I'll, 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 I'll pass the fuck out. Yeah. Like I do, I do have those periods, but here's the deal. I'll go where I'm doing that. And then all of a sudden I'm just, it's like, I, 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 I got the sleep I needed. I slept too much. Yeah. Then I'm like, uh, Slug I can already is. feel it that, you know, um, this is going to be one of them nights. And for me, like, also, too, if, if there's like things coming up and I, I like check them off my my checklist of shit to do, like that puts me in a in a in a state of where I I am feeling good. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about anything coming up or stressing out about the Raiders game or stressing out about court or stressing out about 
you know, Purdue. people coming in or people, you know, whatever it is. I'm like, cool. So when I when I'm in one of those moods where I want to talk, where I enjoy talking, where I enjoy going through my emails, I I I I grab onto that and try to hold on to that as long as I can because I don't know when that feeling is going to come again. So let me ask you this, because like like Freddie Raider said, have you ever tried any normal herbs? What 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 have you tried that you've ever realized it kind of low key brings you out of those funks more than anything? Exercise, exercise, definitely, definitely. definitely. Um, I, I I take I take you know vitamins. I take um, this stuff called um, uh, I can't think of the name of it, but it's like it's basically raw vegetables and fruits. So I get all of my Nutrients vegetables and yeah. fruits through, um, like pill form. Um, my actually I got on, I got on some, you know, from just the drugstore, some like testosterone stuff. Yeah. You know, just, to, just little things just to, to get your testosterone going a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And, um, so my vitamins, um, Eating healthy, hydrating is huge. Hydrating huge, is big, huge, yes. huge, yes. Um, and again, I'm so bu- I'm so busy with my kids, and our schedules are so nuts that um, just sometimes, getting a reg- sometimes that can be good and bad, right? Because just getting a regular routine, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, ha- having kids and having a wife, dogs, you're always so busy that yeah. sometimes it's a good way because you're mentally just going, 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 going. But then sometimes that triggers the anxiety because there's always so much going on and you're trying to help everybody outside. Like that's one thing about this, right? I, I, I've learned like these past few days because I kind of wanted to go away from YouTube for a while. Right. Because, oh, no, I, I, I heard you. You said, I'm out of here, man. I can't yeah, do this shit. I just didn't want to do it because, um, and oh, gee, we're going to get to that too. How do you deal with the disconnect? I, I, we're going to talk about that. Like with me personally, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just have to get away from the world. Like, I, I have to just turn everything off. And I haven't done that in a while. You know what I mean? I, I took two days off this week just to get away. The one thing I haven't been doing as of late is the exercise because the, the depression has been kind of like kicking my ass to yeah. the point where it's like, it's hard to even get up and go out and just woo, 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 woo. You know what I mean? So, but exercise, yes, di- diet and exercise, Vincent, is definitely huge. But I just feel like sometimes, man, the world, because I see somebody else say, do you think social media affects? It definitely does. All of this shit does. Social media is definitely something, especially when you're doing something like this, where you have a lot of people that, that tune in and, and you feel like me and Stu, where you get to a point, right? Where you, you, you have to do a show because it's yes. not about, it's not about you anymore. Yes. It's not yes. about you. It's, it's, yes. it's, don't get me wrong. This does help us as well, but sometimes we don't have it in us, but, it, but we know that this helps other people as well. So it's a stress reliever for everybody. You know what I mean? And, and I don't look, I know when Stu, I know when Stu is on his, on his, on his mode. When I don't hear from him for a day, I know Stu is, is doing his own thing. So I'm not even going to bug him. I'm not going to hit him up, but I'll definitely have a million people hit me up. What's going on with Stu? And I'm like, you guys don't know Stu like I know Stu yet. He's going to just go do his own thing. He's dealing with his shit, how he does, he deals yeah. with it. And then he bounces right back. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, sometimes you just have to simplify things, you guys. Just simplify shit. Get back to what worked for you and then come back whenever it is. Well, the, the, the biggest thing is, is, is just like you're doing right now. You're like, you're explaining that. You're, you're telling the people that you care about, the people around you, this is kind of my pattern. This is what I, this is what, this is what you could expect from me. Cause I, I've had since I got on social media, I was on a, a different app called Live Me. Um, yes. I got on that, and I established relationships with people, and the, and some of those people, one, they're on it to earn money, but they're on it every day. And yeah. I established relationships with people, and sometimes I think the way that I treat people and talk to people and connect with people. They've never made a connection with that, like to somebody. So, but for me, I make that connection a lot with people. Yeah. So to me, the relationship's not as serious as it is to them. And I've had, you know, what the, where, where are you at, dude? Da, 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 and like guys that are like blowing my phone up because they're, they, 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 one, they miss me. They miss the conversation. They think that I'm big time in them or something. It's like, dude, listen, man, like you got to realize that. If you don't hear from me, no news is good news. Yes. Okay. Yes. No news is good news. I haven't had the day yet. 
and hopefully I never will. But I said, if there's a day where I am calling you and saying there's a problem, then I know it's a real, I know it's real. Like some really terrible fucking shit's yeah. going down. Yeah. Because I, but I, I want everyone to know that. And I think if you put that out and I tell people, Stu, you never answer your, like even my buddies. And this was, this is from 15 years ago. You know, but, so but you like, know what though, bro? You're afforded, you're afforded the luxury. And I'm gonna tell this this to everybody in the chat too. Shout out to Black Widow. I appreciate you, love. As always, sis, you already know. And shout out to Eddie. That's real shit. Sometimes you got to unplug from the matrix. But let me tell you this. I think anyone that does good and, and, and wants everybody to succeed, and you always put positive energy, you're afforded the luxury to be selfish sometimes, right? Yeah. I like, 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 I think it is sometimes being selfish. Like, you know what? I'm not answering my phone. I'm changing my number. I'm deleting this. I'm deleting that. Sometimes you should, you should feel afforded the luxury to be selfish. Sometimes you have to put yourself first because if you're not working, your kids ain't working, your wife ain't working, nothing works. So you bring up a good point. So I used to be, you know, when I, when I got done playing, you know, I owned an indoor football team. I, I just had my second child. I had a limousine company. I had a yes. training business. I had an apparel company. You know, I had four different LLCs out there. And I, I'm, I'm boom, boom, plus working out, plus, you know, and I'm like, I'm doing all this shit, staying on top of it. And all of a sudden I would like get to the point where I'm like, what the fuck? I don't want to do any of this shit, but yeah. I'm in it. Like I'm in this shit. I, I have clients. I have, I have customers. I have people that are counting on me, employees, business partners. So I had to answer it. Yeah. So I had to like push through that shit, man. And, like pushing through that is, I would say it's it, it's not as bad as you think. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Oh man, I don't, I just gotta. I don't want to talk to prayer. I don't want to. And then all of a sudden you get up and you do it, and you're like, oh shit, okay, that wasn't too bad. So I could, I wasn't able to do it. I started, I started losing. Um, one, I started losing patience. Two, I started getting disorganized. But now knowing with this disability, really. I don't have to answer the phone because I, there's nothing that anybody really technically needs from me. Yes. There's nobody yes. that's that I said, I'm going to do something for. There's nobody that's planning on me to, you know, so when the phone rings, I'm going, well, my, my wife and kids are here. That's really the only people yeah. I truly like are going yeah. to worry about. Yes. So that's nice knowing like no matter what it is, it's usually to be honest with you, it's usually somebody needing something. Yep. It's usually somebody who needs me. And this is, a, I don't know if it sounds bad or not, but needs me a lot more than I need them. Yes. So. Bro, yes, 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 yes. But, you and, know, but, but that, I think that's how you figure out who's for you and who's not, right? When, it, when, when people call you sometimes and just say, hey, I'm just checking on you, brother. Love you. Hope everything's good with you. Keep them people around because. Like you said, they're not asking for anything. All they want, all they want to know is how you are. Make sure you're alive and breathing, and keep it moving. See, and that's that's the other thing. For whatever reason, and I don't know when it happened, where that that's like the one thing I don't want you to fucking ask me. Like that, I know, I know that always. And I, but, but but you but you heard how I said I'm just checking on you, brother. No, no, no. See, but. It is, it is your approach and it is somebody who I understand. Yeah. I, someone who understands that feeling or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. like it, it always, to me, it was, it always like, like you're taking, like, again, I, I, I would look at it and go, Hey, listen, man, like I'm, I'm a fucking grown adult that's been successful without anyone's fucking help. Okay. I've had support. Right. I mean, I've had a great family. But they didn't, I mean, they, 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 they led me in a path and they would help if I needed help. But I did, I mean, I'm the one who did the shit, right? Yeah. And I'm thinking, I got this person taking time out of the fucking fucked up shit they got to come in. And what I thought it was like to come in and save Stu. Like, I want to be the person that's helping Stu through this situation. It's like, dude, I... I don't, I don't need that shit, man. Like yeah. I would take offense to it because I'm sitting here going, Hey man, to be honest with you during the day, 
I didn't fucking worry about none of the shit you have going on. Yeah. I didn't. You know what yeah. I mean? I got so much stuff I'm focused on going here. Like, it just always looked like there, it was almost like, like I was a degenerate or something. Like they yeah. had to, they had to fucking call and like, hey man, like you you okay? Like, first of all, it's none of your fucking business to begin with, motherfucker. Like, I'm not calling you and checking up on you, but there was a period of time where my wife, um, you know, with my first DUI. Yeah, like that whole big thing of alcoholic, and at the time, dude, I, I, I didn't at that time I didn't have a leg to stand on. Yeah. She made it very clear to everybody that I had a fucking problem, and I knew I didn't have a problem. But you know what? I w- I wanted to keep my family together, so yeah. there was a lot of things I had to admit to and suck up, and 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 you know, t- and and have to go out. And with this depression, with this anxiety, with these mental issues, now adding in the fact that people think I have a drinking problem and I'm sitting here like, you know what? And I had to go out and I had to say I had this drinking problem and I had to go to these meetings and listen to these motherfuckers complain, fucking bitch, and tell me what I should be doing. I'm looking at this guy like, do you like... You've never accomplished anything in your life besides staying sober, and you want to act like you can come to fuck. But you know, no, don't, don't fucking judge. And I went to the fucking treatments, and you know, read all the fucking. I read everything on it, right? But for me, it was like I felt like people were trying to like. They got. I felt they got pleasure, and got a like, got a got a rise off of helping Stuart Schweiger and something like hey. Stuart, I, I I have something on him. Like I I'm, yeah. I'm, but, but I'm you, I don't I don't have this problem. But he yeah, yeah, no, no, but you, I'm but, gonna fucking. But but that that is pride and that is ego though. Still, you got you got to admit, big bro. Because at I the end know. of the day, at the end of the day, who gives a fuck what what kind of satisfaction they get? As long as you're getting what you need, keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? No, like, no, and I understand that. No, I I, I totally understand that that yeah. it comes down to. But again, okay. So for instance. Uh, docs, when you were you know getting upset and saying that you were done, you said, "Listen, I'm not, I'm not a YouTube celebrity. This shit is new to me. I'm not used to negative comments and opening my like. I've been dealing with that type of shit since I was in fourth grade, man. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Being in the being in the spotlight, right? And mm-hmm. it's not easy, dude. It's yeah. not. It's not fucking easy. It took me many many years." You know how many fucking times like motherfuckers would just talk shit just yeah. because they they just assumed I was a fucking ass. Oh, screw it. And then I get a chance. To, how many people go, hey, man, you're actually a nice dude. I'm like, why the fuck would you think I wasn't? <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah. I mean, I mean, like I had a lot of friends, but at the same time, I also had people that and I just had to. And I, I mean, literally, it was the beginning of like. Uh, like what? Uh, uh, the messenger. What is it? Yahoo or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there were like, you know, you go into like a uh, a room, you know, like they had different categories and people could put shit. At. I remember sixteen when I'm sixteen years old. I had grown adults talking shit about me and I in these chat rooms and stuff. And I'm like, really? Like, yeah. what the fuck? You so know, I always had this the feeling. Thing with me is though, bro, I, I don't care about talking about me, right? I've done music for 20 years. I'm used to people giving their opinion on me. When you bring my family into it, right? That that's a whole nother out. Like that's no, a whole nother yeah, thing. No, 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 no. Yeah, to yeah, me, yeah. to me, that's what I'm. I say I'm not a YouTuber anymore. Where do you live? Give me the address. I'm gonna drop the pin. I'm pulling up. You know what I'm saying? Like that. That's 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 when that's when the old me comes out, and I'm like, where are you, King? I I need that. Like I need that. You know what I mean? But I realized. I realized. You know what I'm saying? Some of the energy that I was putting out to the world in, through through YouTube and through my videos, some of it I was asking for negative energy back. You know what I mean? So yeah, so, but you know what though, you have a strong personality. Yes, and, and what you're saying, you have. See, here's the deal. And there, I will say this: you have every right when you're when you're passionate about a topic. I know that that's not just come off of pure. Um, pure, um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Adre- you know, pure, just fucking knee jerk reaction. 
I know you feel that way because you've studied it, you've been around it, you're seeing yeah. patterns, and you're going, listen, dude, this is fucking bullshit. And and you you you're that's what you can do. You can get passionate about subjects when you fucking lived it and you fucking have done research on it. Yeah. Okay. And other people, they get they 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 don't know how to react to that, right? A lot of people mm -hmm. are very, very insecure. A lot of people are going off of what someone else is saying. Yeah. So I don't think you brought what 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 it was is is I think people that do that shit, you need to check their fucking asses. Yeah. And you need to say, hey, listen, motherfucker, you really want to fucking talk some shit? Here's my fucking address. Yeah. I mean, I, I've had it in games where I said, listen, I brought the security over. I told you this. Motherfucker in the stands, I said, hey, you fucking guy that's talking shit and fucking pissing off all the other fans that doesn't know shit, <laughs> you're, you're fucking talking shit to me because I'm a fucking white dude that you think looks fucking corny or something. I said, here's here, here's a parking lot pass. Okay. Yeah. And this Hold is up. Fred. Yeah. After the game, take give me about 20, 25 minutes. Meet me in the parking lot. And let's continue this fucking conversation. Yeah. You need to check a motherfucker so he knows that that behavior is not acceptable. Just like there is no problem with a coach dog fucking cussing a player out. Now, he, the more, hey, buddy. What's up? Love you, mother. Go, go Sorry, I'm, fuck, I'm saying dog fuck cussing and shit, but. <laughs> it's all good. He for, me, for me, like, that, that person may not even know they're being an asshole, or a football player may not even know he's doing something wrong. Yeah. Until a coach says, hey, yo, dumbass, that's not what we're doing. Oh, really? Oh, shit, my bad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. there's no reason you can't. That's the thing I don't like. That's the passive aggressive left wing fucking bullshit where they can come in, throw their fucking two cents at you, and then they back the fuck out. And, and you they can they can say whatever they want to you, but your reaction, they they don't realize that you can say whatever you want back. Yeah, but but see, this is the thing, Stu, and I think me and you need to learn this because of what your reaction was to what oh, I up, said. Mommy? Right, right. What your reaction was to, to what I is, I think we both in terms of that, and, and, and you may kill me, big bro. I think we both need to uh, uh, grow up in a sense because we have families. There's no, we can't put our address out there. At the end of the day, somebody would love that. Somebody would love that. Don't get me wrong. We shooting shit up if you come to our house, but they may get the first lick. You know what I mean? So you just never really know. No, bro. I know. No, no, you're, you're absolutely right. And there was a situation about six or seven, I, I did. I, I don't know. I don't think I talked to you about it. But a buddy of mine, let's just say this: I introduced a buddy of mine to another dude. Okay. And my buddy fucked the dude, like not fucked him, but oh, oh shit! I'm like, sorry, what? like oh, screwed shit. him over in a, in a business transaction. Yes, fucked him over. Well, my buddy blamed it on me, and then the dude was like, well, Stu, you introduced me to this guy, so what this motherfucker owes me, I'm putting this debt on you. And I'm going, okay, and I'm trying to be patient, and he says, listen, you got, 20, you got 48 hours. I said, hold on, I don't, I don't deal well with, I, I said, I don't, I don't deal well with ultimatums, first of all, motherfucker, Right? Yeah, and then he he he's he's telling me that he's got someone on call that if I don't figure the situation out, he's gonna come to my house. And I said, I said, really, motherfucker. And I, I'm I'm just my dad's the same way. I'm I I'm not really scared of shit. And here's the deal: I'm in mental health. As these things happen, my my brain that could be a good and a bad thing. Well, my brain. I don't think of consequences anymore, right? I don't have a filter anymore. But see, but see that now, now, now. What's cool about that, right? Is this is where I want to tell you to reach out to me, right? Because I do have a filter when it comes to when it comes to my household, right? 
I like I know I, I just I know what you just said, but with your brain, it doesn't it, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't recharge like that. Like with, with what you but like with me, I have to think about every single thing in which yeah. like I said, you should too, but you said your brain doesn't do that. So I think I can be a person that you can reach out to, like Graph, I want to kill this motherfucker. What should I do? And I can talk because everyone needs a real one to talk them down off the ledge. Absolutely. Sometimes. No, and, and and here's the deal. I've I've trust me. In the last three or four years, I've learned how to operate with my new brain. But what yes. you're saying is, you know, you never know what can happen. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. I called up a, a guy up in Michigan who is involved in stuff. And I said, hey, man, I said, here's the situation. I said, I might need some help. He said, he said, Stu, he said, these young cats, man. They're different. He says, they don't, they're, they're, they don't give a fuck. And, and the guy told me, he says, listen, he says, I'm 20 years old. I'll fucking, I'll, I'll murder somebody. I'll be out by him 30. I'm like, oh shit. I'm thinking like over, over a small amount of money. He said, Stu, how much, how much does your buddy, he said, to be honest with you, just, just take it as a loss. It's not worth it to even test these young dudes. Cause, and I said, damn, you're right. Cause they don't even, it ain't even a fight. It's a fucking gun. Yeah. And, they, and when I when he said I don't give a fuck, I'll be out before I'm thirty. I said, God Bro. damn, man, these motherfuckers. Yeah, and, and see, okay, let me. Th this is another thing that I would like to say because I want to ask you what you think I should do because I I know you've never been in this situation, but like, okay, like that situation, I already I would have knew how to handle that because where I'm from, I'm used to that. That that's a that's a Monday morning. You know what I mean? Like it's just that's just typical shit. Hey, my buddy, you got hey, you set me up with woo woo woo, and it didn't work out. So hey, bro, we gonna have to figure this out. That's why I don't get in the middle of anybody's business anymore. You want to figure? Hey, look, I'm not even directing you anybody's. Whoa, well, streetwise, streetwise. You know what I'm yeah, saying? No, no, no. I'm saying like, yeah, bro, yeah I, wash my hands. I'm not. I'm not making connect. I'm not. No, I just because everyone fucking says one thing and it's the other thing, and it's like all yeah. of a sudden, since you're the guy that answers the phone. You're the one that has to fucking deal with the shit. But but I love the way you you talk to a 20 year old. You see how old was the guy? You said 20? 20. The guy you talked to? Yes. To speak to someone that young and that mature to say, hey, just pay him. It ain't worth it. Oh no, 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 no. Sorry. No, no, no. The guy I called up in Michigan, he's my age. Okay. 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 You know, he's 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 from our 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 state yeah, 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 yeah. things operate. But but yeah. but you need someone like that in your corner because he could have potentially saved you and your family's life. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. We don't know what could have happened. At the same but time, though, I happened. Say, at the same time, I love Indiana because it's safe. Yeah, like these cats here. Like I, I'm not like if it was in a different city, I would. If it was up in Saginaw or like Detroit or whatever. I'm not fucking around because, but these guys around here, they make these threats. And I, and again, that's me just looking at my situation and knowing, dealing with people who have been in situations like that and going, yeah. eh, I really don't give a fuck. I don't think you're going to do a goddamn fucking thing. I'll call your fucking bluff. But then like you yeah, said, no, thank you, brother. Thank like you, you said though, it's, it's not even, I, I just never, that whole thing of someone trying to take me for a bitch really, it, it, I, I don't I hate that. I yeah. fucking hate that. I, me personally, I'm at the point now, I don't give a shit about that. You know what I mean? Like I I put it like this. Well, don't get me wrong, especially when the alcohol gets flowing. That that that's that's the problem. I I have some drinks and then my pride and all that shit is just like, hey, bro. For me, usually alcohol just makes me happy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, but see, I, <laughs> okay, now now I want to ask you this, okay? Turn turn in, we 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 we're gonna get off trying to kill people and shit, right? But Okay, my, my problem with depression and anxiety is, right, and I want everybody in the chat to, to give me some feedback on this as well, because growing up, I lost a lot of people, right? A lot, a lot. And, mm -hmm. and, and most of the people that I did lose mattered the most to me, right? So even when I'm doing really good in life, like I'm doing really good. My family's great. I got a home. You know, I'm, I'm, I got everything I need, right? But I'm so used to feeling bad. Yep. I that I'm at a point now it. where I'm only feel good when I feel bad, right? right? So, 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 like I'll sit in the garage and I'll go buy a bottle and I'll just sit here and listen and I'll, to music and drink and and that might be my time to recharge and cry, whatever it is. Because, but I'm feeling good while I'm hurting. 
right? And it's, it's just, it's strange to me that I don't want to feel like that, but I'm definitely sitting here hurting, hurting like a motherfucker, but it feels good because I'm so used to just. It's a reset. It's a yeah. reset. Because yeah. for me, here's what will happen with me. When things were going good for too long, I'm going, man, I know some shit is going to go down. Yeah. And instead of waiting for it, I'm going to bring it. I'm going to self-sabotage myself so I can reset and get another couple weeks of good shit. Yeah. But like, I'm sitting there going, hey, when, what, what's going to happen? What, what's it going to be? What's, fuck it. I'm going to do whatever it is I'm not supposed to do and get it out of the way now because I know I'm going to do it anyway. So why not just get it now and yeah. fucking. So I would self-sabotage all the fuck. I didn't know. I didn't know how to be comfortable with things going good just because I'm so used to being under stress and having yeah. some shit to take care of and having someone to take care of and having something to get ready for and having someone to impress and someone to fucking, and like, so I would, I would fucking literally like, you know what, instead of waiting on it, I'm just going to, I'm just going to make this, I'm going to make the argument right now so we can, we can fight, make up and then have our good next couple of weeks. And it was just a fucking cycle, dude. It was yeah. a fucking cycle. See, now I used to, I used to self-sabotage shit when shit got too good. Right. Yeah. Like this was years ago because I knew I'm like, something's going bad is going to happen anyway. Cause every time all this good shit happens, I lose somebody and I don't just lose somebody. It's always two to three people back to back to back every time. So I'm like, I'm self-sabotaging because I don't even want to deal with this shit. But now, you know, I don't do that anymore. I, I count my blessings every day. I definitely do. But I still, it's, I still go through these phases. Well, like I'm, I'm getting ready to go to Atlanta Saturday morning, right, to go see my mom. Um, a lot of people know that my mom wasn't around when I grew up. But me and my mom are like this now. That is my, mm -hmm. that is my girl, one of my best friends. Love her to death. We are so over that hump. The old me wouldn't allow myself to get over that hump, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't allow myself to do that. But we're we're in a good place now. And but I feel like with me and her, right? Like I'm I'm not drinking right now. I'm going to Atlanta. And me and my mom, we, we get in these we get in these modes because sometimes it, 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 it can get sometimes we want to sit down and have some drinks and just yeah. kind of, and just kind of spill it out, right? Yeah, just kind absolutely. of spill, just kind of spill shit out. You know what I'm saying? Like we just whatever we want to talk about, we talk about. We don't scream at each other no more. But my mom understands that I don't. There's no hatred there. I genuinely love my mama. You're, you're, you're at a different under your relationships at a different. Yeah, it, it's not a mother son. It's it's you're two adults having a conversation, probably right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And and, and I feel like, you know, I told my mom, you know, when I get there, I'm not drinking right now. But you know, when I get there. You know, we might have to have one of the moments where me and you, like we always do, you know, kick back, have a couple and, and, and sit down and just talk about shit because that's our thing. Like, that's our thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, even when my dad not around, never being around, anytime I got around him, he was that dude that was like, let's go get some 40s and shit and, and, and call your man, call your pot and I'm gonna go pick up some weed from him and let's just sit, kick back and talk our shit. So that's all I really knew. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to figure out ways to work around my old ways, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, just trying to create a, a, a new normal in, in every sense of the word. You know what I'm saying? Um, real quick, man, shout out to Mateo. Man, I'm 38. I live in SAC. I, I was tested on some road race stuff a few weeks ago, but I took the high road. Thank you, brother, for doing that because Sacramento is crazy. Um, 10 years ago, it'd be on and popping, but I'm speaking from prior experiences. God bless. Somebody out there would have could have pulled their shit out and, and, and let go because Sacramento is, is a war. Is a, is a war. Uh Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I, okay. You, you're talking about your mother. I had a point. Um, Love you too, Ruck. Love you too, my brother. You're talking about, talking your about mom. this, man. What the hell was I going to, um, let me see. Oh, um, shit. What was it? What was it? What was it? Shout out to our brother Phil, man. He in the chat. And um, he's talking about his anxieties and, and, and stuff like that as well, my brother. I'm proud of you, bro. I want to hear more, man. If you would like, let oh. me know. I'll definitely pull you up. So one thing. So that story I talked about, that guy saying he was going to send someone to shoot me up or whatever. Yeah. Me and that dude are 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 pretty tight now. Like, we're boys. now, And that's one thing I've always tried to do where I never – 
I, I never cut anybody off. My goal is to take that relationship and turn it into, you know, a friendship. You know what I'm saying? Now, like, now, now, now for me, I'm going to be honest with you. I look at that as a, from a standpoint of you're just too nice, bro. Because someone that puts me, someone that, that literally calls and, and tells me that he'll shoot my shit up, put me and my family, we can never be cool again. I, maybe, maybe you can do the keep my enemies closer, bro. Like, you know, hey, we cool, we cool, you know. But I couldn't talk to him on, on a daily basis. I couldn't do that because someone that ever says some crazy shit like that to me, bro, I could never. Ever and more power to you. I'm I'm proud of you because just like Dirty Dirty said uh, not too long ago on one of the Mental Health Mondays, he reached out to a he seen a guy that had a hit on his life and it was the wrong person. It wasn't supposed to be on him, and he ran into him and they ended up being cool. You know what I mean? But me personally, well, brother, hey, more power to you. I, I, like I said, I'm not judging. I just there's no fucking he, way. Here's the, and here's the reason why though is because I knew he was a young kid who had nobody. And that money that he lost, that shit, his connect was lost on it. I get that. And I knew that he had, he was desperate. And he's, he's probably looking at, oh, this, 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 this rich white dude's just going to fucking, you know, be scared. So I knew it was all bullshit, which it but was. But still, he's going to, he's going to forever look at you as that rich white dude now. Well. That's scared. No, no, no. But someone that he, 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 I'm, what I'm saying is, is, is that I'm an easy, probably an easy target. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yeah. But once we went back and forth, I, I said, hey, man, I said, and I got, I just got to talking with them. And, I, yeah. and I'm thinking like, dude, what what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? And and the guy who ended up fucking, we got them both on the phone. And I, I did a three-way. Motherfuckers didn't know it. And I got them both on the phone to say their sides. And, hey, hey, and the way you word and shit today is crazy. The one that fucked them, I got them on a three-way. Um, it, this is insane to me. This is some X-rated mental health shit, y'all. Shout out to Stu for somehow, some way, sexualizing mental health. Shout out to you, my guy. No, that's <laughs> your dirty ass taking what I'm saying and making it dirty, motherfucker. No, 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 I just, I don't. There's not too many. I mean, there's not too many people that I, I, I mean, and that's the thing, man. I just know it. It, it takes so much energy to fucking hate somebody yeah. and to fucking try to avoid somebody and, and trying to, it's like, man, you know what? Like, you know, you know how I know the guys that I grew up with that are still in the streets and that still, you know how I know they love me? Cause they don't call me on any bullshit, right? They don't call me to get me involved in any of the shenanigans, any of this shit. They don't call me like they used to. We got to go whip this dude ass. Let's go. Hey, we we got to go shoot this house up. They don't call me on no crazy shit. Because they know I have too much to lose and they wouldn't want to put me in that position, right? So I, I really choose, I pick and choose like who, you know one thing I, I gravitated to Stu with y'all in the chat? Because I genuinely know he has a good heart. Him saying that he's still cool with that guy genuinely proves to me you have a great heart. But sometimes you, you, you straddle the fence with being a big heart and then being stupid as fuck, right? It, it's just a balance like, it's like you can't allow somebody in your inner circle that may try to penetrate that and do something negative to negatively to you later on. Because like you said, this guy never had nothing. He may somehow some way get closer with you and be like, oh, I got the in, I got the inside scoop on him now. And you know what I mean? I know what he got in the house. I know what he has this. I know what he has with that. So just all I'm going to say is. No, you're right. No, no, no. You're no, you're you're dude. My just wife be careful me. with that relationship. That's my, all I'm going to no, say. My, my wife tells me that shit all the time. And. Yeah. From somebody, bro, that had my best friend rob my house when I was in seventh grade while my bedridden grandma was in the bed and couldn't get out. He robbed my house while I was at work. One of my best friends, somebody I grew up with, called my grandma, his grandma, um, you know, and then and then what's crazy is five months later, he went out and killed somebody and went to jail for life. But he went in my house because he got on drugs and robbed my house, took my computer, took my uh, beat machine, took hella shit while I was gone and my bedridden grandma was up in the bed. So when I, when I tell you this, this is why I learned not to trust just anybody. You feel me? And, and if somebody puts me in a situation like that, I just, me personally, oh, I'm falling all the way back. I'm, I'm just done. Because I don't know, there's no happy medium with me. Either I go smoke that man or I just leave it alone. Well, I guess this too. Here's the deal. With another person involved, I'm thinking, well, if I can, if, if, if I can, if I can talk to this guy and tell him my side of the story... Or 
and not just cut him. If I just say fuck you, and I'm always thinking like, is he gonna is he gonna come up and is he talking to the other dude? And what are they saying about it? So I'm like, I, I'm gonna get this motherfucker on my team. Yeah. Like I'm gonna get him mm-hmm. on my fucking team and make sure he directs hit the fucking negative energy towards the fucking right person. But if I say fuck you. And you know, fucking test me or whatever. Then I'm always got to be worried about. But, but but still, this is the problem. Negative en- negative energy goes where it wants. It goes as it pleases. If you allow that into your world, you cannot dictate where that negative energy goes. Nope. Here, well, I'll, I'll say this, guys. Trust me. I'll say this. I'm I I can be, and my dad the same way. My grandma's the same way. I can, <laughs> I can make you think you made a decision. But I'm making you make that decision. Yeah. So, which is manipulation, which is 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 it, it it's a it's something that I have to be careful on, because it is a it it is a tool that I could use to be very fucking yeah very fucking. And, but we've all we've all been there, right? But like I, I'm at a point now, I don't have the energy to manipulate anyone. I, I feel like if there's any way I can get something, I'm gonna go out and get it on my own. I don't need to work this person against this person to do this and do this. You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, we're we're grown, man. Like fuck all that. Like at the end of the day, bro, that's so much energy that you can do, you're putting towards that that you can put towards something. And I'm not even saying just you. I'm saying in general. Like you know, what I'm saying like. Right. I guess what I'm what I'm always trying to do. I'm I'm always building up my team because you never know when somebody can come in fucking handy, bro. And I know it's it seems selfish, but. It, it, it's nice to 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 have guys an arm length away that it's not dudes that you're fucking trusting or whatever. But and again, see my, my team is right here. Like like I don't right. I know my wife and kids are gonna have my back regardless. I, I don't I, I don't need someone that I know like like my, mind you I can make a call to Sacramento right now if some shit happens. Some shit the other day happened with a family member out there. I'm not gonna speak on it, but I instantly made a call like, hey, bro. Um, I need y'all to understand, you know, my bro, blah, blah, blah. And, and it, it was that easy just to make something happen if I wanted to, you know what I mean? But even my bro told me, don't make that. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Because then it, 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 spir- it can spiral out of control and turn into something else. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm out here and my bros in Sacramento having to deal with that and I don't have to deal with it. You right. know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, we kind of have to look at things and say, look, if, if I even need to think, I'm at an age now, if I even have to think, that you're not for me, you're not for me. Right. Just as simple as that. And, and I don't need you. And, and, and as a man, if if if, if someone's going to shoot for me, it's going to be me. That's it. That, I mean, because I, I don't trust anybody anyway. You, one of those guys can snitch on you and you go to jail for life because of your, your, you know what I'm saying? I, look, I do my dirt by my lonely. Point mm-hmm. blank, period. I, that's how we grew up because I've seen guys go down left and right because somebody they thought were solid was not solid as they thought they said they were. You yep. got to do all your shit on your own, point blank, period. I get what you're saying, though, Stu. I trust me. I do, my brother. I just, I feel like, I don't know. I don't know. Let, 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 we, we, I want to talk to you more about that offline because I definitely. Well, well, but here's the thing, too. So for me, again, when you bring in the mental mental illness with shit. Yes. Um, yes. With me having the damage to my prefrontal cortex. And I talked about the the impulse control and the thought of consequence. Basically, my yep. brain is like a 17-year-old kid's brain. And I have to remember that I'm not a 17-year-old kid with nothing to lose. Yeah. But that's why I'm not father, judging you. That's why I cannot. Oh, no, 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 no. I know. But like from my father, again, my father always said like he 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 could chop it up with the mayor and the, and the sheriff and you know do all this shit, but he also chopped it up with the fucking head of you know gangsters, you know, head of gangs, and, and and dudes that did some grimy shit. He said, "Son, you 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 always need to make sure that you're friends with everybody, but also too you you gotta have people. I don't want to say in low places, but you gotta have some people that are a little bit on the on the on the uh, slide with some shit. You know what I'm saying? Because those people, when shit really breaks down, and you help them out when they're in a bad situation." That you got loyalty there. Some of these motherfuckers. I, 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 I feel you. I'm just saying anything that I've ever gotten that was worth having, I got on my own. And I didn't have to stress about someone coming back and saying, you know what, man, you owe me for this. Or you owe me for that. Trust me. I, I, I was in the streets. I did a lot of stupid shit in the past that I know sometimes I think that may come back and haunt me. 
know what I mean? Like, I, I, I really still sleep sometimes and wake up like, please, God, do not allow anything that happened in my past because I'm totally not that person anymore. That's why the other night when I was on Spotlight Show and I came out of my body, that was me. With that, that was really, like you said, bro, the 17-year-old you, that was the 21, 22-year-old me on some I don't give a fuck. I will, I will just good. be honest, though, when, when, I, when I think of the people that really – I, I, I consider friends, guys I can trust. Yeah. And the guys that you're talking about, don't, you know, be careful of these guys. They, they've, I've, I've never been in a situation where they screwed me. Right now, three of my closest friends, guys that are upstanding citizens, I got 48 grand between three people out there right now that they won't fuck, they fucked me over on. And I'm sitting like, the, the people who are supposed to be the family men, this and that, are the ones that fucked me. But these dudes that people are going to say don't trust. So I'm just going off of what I know. It's, but, but still, it's because they know they can do that. They, like, like they, they know they can do it, right? Because at the end of the day, they know your situation. Like, you have way too much to lose. You have way too much in your life to even deal with some nonsense for some outside motherfuckers. At the end of the day, bro, it's just not worth it. So they know that. At the end of the day, bro... From this well, point, who, who, who's they? Which which they are you talking about? Oh, whoever you were talking about that owes you a bunch of money, right? And, and they're not, and, and it's still out there, and you're not getting that back, right? I would say, anytime I've ever been fucked over, it's by normal, upstanding, fucking white motherfuckers. To be honest with you, okay. And Mo guys, hey, hey. to again, who 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 typically would be like, "Why are you hanging out with this motherfucker?" I've they're, they've never fucked me over. So I'm just going off of what I know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying it can't happen, but I'm sitting here going, well, what the fuck, man? I'm going, I'm thinking, and then, and then when I call them, I'm the, and I'm sitting here going, okay, well, it comes to a point where I'm sitting here going, again, are they just playing me for a bitch? And I'm thinking, do I need to go up there? And do I need to go fucking crack a motherfucker's skull? Nah, because you know what's funny? I'd rather be a bitch than be in jail. Yep, I be a bitch in jail. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can be a bitch in jail. Uh, look, I, I, I for sure. I'd rather be a bitch being at the park down the street throwing the football around my kids. I'd rather be a bitch laying so up. You, you, you can stand by, watching by, so. you can, you can stand by <laughs> either you two guys, Phil. Let's say the other Phil. You could you could know that this motherfucker owes you fifteen thousand dollars, right out of your. <laughs> Oh, I like those. Nice. They look <laughs> yeah. She sneaks up on me, dude. She's like a, I, she's, I didn't even hear her coming. Hey, but you know what? That's the real one that got your back. There's the, there's the, here, hold on. Here's the, here's the kids. There's some love pictures it. just came in. That's my oldest, Cameron. Oh, I love it, man. Hey, Stu, you know what's so crazy? You know, This you is know Emma, my eight-year-old. She's me with long hair. Looks just like you. Like just like you, and then that's that's Alex and uh, my little mini me Avery. Hey, Stu, you know what's so crazy? Shout to them beautiful kids. You know what happened? God is crazy. Your, she came down right on time and showed you the per your purpose of why not to fuck with weirdos that can yep. put you in harm's way. This happened perfectly on time. Divine intervention. Divine intervention. No. Hey, tell me, God, not as as Sweet. No, so so no. Listen, dude. Trust me. So, here's the thing. So, what was I? Oh yeah. Okay. Let's say this. So let's say let's say hey, let's say this graphic. Let's say Brandon mm -hmm. owes you fifteen k. Okay. And you and you, he says, you know, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna pay you back and blah blah blah. And you told him don't you know, don't tell me a certain date because I'm gonna hold you to it. And then doesn't pay you back. Let me and tell you this. Sudden, you're if, seeing, I get, you're if, I get somebody, if I get somebody that kind of money, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't even expect it back. That's right. I was just getting ready to say that's what my daddy but told listen, me. But listen, but listen, but loan listen. money you, can't, you can't, can't afford to lose. Nope. Have you guys ever given anybody 15 grand? Nope. 20 nope. grand? Nope. Okay. So I know it's, it's real easy to say this shit, but then you see a motherfucker going on vacation. And yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. My man, shit. Bro. Let, let me tell you going. something. Back in the day oh. when I was in the game, right? Okay. I lost a lot. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna put myself out there in, in, in too too much. All I'm gonna say is I lost some 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 shit. 
right? Some, mm-hmm. some, some shit that, that got me some money, right? And I seen some people that were playing with some stuff that I delved into. And I was like, okay, this is, that's that money, that money's from this. Like, right? Mm-hmm. Right? But, but guess what happened? I looked at it and I said, you know what? And my wife did this before I had my kids too. My wife said, babe, just take that as an L. Don't fuck with them no more. They mm-hmm. lost the connect. We moving on. We moving forward. You know what I mean, at the end of the day, I take it as this. If that, I look, that's a, that sounds like a business transaction. I'm talking about someone taking money and getting in vitro. Isn't it the same uh, shit? Getting in vitro, going on family vacations, uh, buying their daughter uh, dance lessons and all this shit. And I'm sitting here going, hmm, I don't, I don't go on fucking vacation. Yeah, I don't take my kids on fucking, but but yet you're gonna sit here and floss on my fucking dime as a fucking as an adult male with a family who owns a business. I mean, this this is like this is for like this is like legit. It's not there, there's no grimy shit coming behind this shit. Well, get guess what? Get, this is what we learned right here, Stu. Yeah, don't, don't give nobody do no money. Again. Don't do it again. Don't do that shit again. I don't care how I don't care how great it sounds. Don't do it. Family, non-family, say I don't have it. I don't yep. have it. It's what they teach the rookies in the symposium these days. You say Dang. the first thing you need to learn is how to say no. I don't have it. Because look, now we got Richie Rich in the comment section saying, "Can I get a loan stool?" You know. <laughs> but, but 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 that that's the thing though. It, to literally, guys, to, it's not about the money. We know right. that. We, we know it that. Is. But, but it's, it's about, about you. This motherfucker it's, thinking. it's about you putting yourself in a position for this to happen. Right. Well, you know, also, too, when you have fucking contracts and you have shit that's fucking signed and it's fucking legit, you know, I'm thinking. Yeah, Scott. Scott, Stu acting like we football players that got 15, 20 cages to you get. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Oh, you ever loaned anybody 15K? I was like, shit, I wish I could see 15 I'm just saying, guys, think fuck. about 15K is 58. Think about giving somebody 15K and then they just act like everything's cool and they're going, like, I didn't, I wouldn't care if it was to fucking buy his kids clothes and yeah, to yeah, feed yeah. shit. They're fucking buying, they're out balling on it. A part of a part of you, a part of mental health. I don't care field. who you are. I love that you're talking about that on here because this is connected to mental health. Like, yeah. like, oh, yeah, people, people are definitely taking your kindness for weakness. They're taking advantage of you. And at the end of the day, it's a lesson learned. You know what I mean? You say, I can't fuck with this person no more. Yeah. Keep it moving. Like, like, like Sandra said, the best loan advice is uh, uh, that was that's what I'll wait, wait. Best uh, beat loan is advice. Wait, wait, what? Beat, beat loan, loan is advice. Is advice. I always say. Oh, best loan is advice. I think that's what she's trying to but, say. Uh, the best uh, loan is advice. advice. Yes. So it's like this. So basically what Sandra's saying is, oh, you can, hey, can I borrow 15K? You know what you should do for that? Go work for it. Mm-hmm. No, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I'm not I'm not saying that I didn't put myself in the situation and knew the, what, the yeah. potential of it. Yeah. I'm just saying, again, I, I, I just I, – I, I look at it going, okay – you you know I can come beat the fuck out of you. Yeah. You know I'm yeah. unstable, and yet you still act like I'm thinking, are you fucking crazy or what? So I'm like thinking, like you gotta you you have there there you have to pay in some let's, shape. Let's let's end, let's end it right here on that note with that with that because I want to hear I want to hear Phil's story as well. Stu. Oh yeah, I'm time, sorry, Phil. <laughs> No, no, at that time, you honestly believed he needed that 15K more than you did. Don't feel yeah. bad about that shit. Your heart was in the right place. That's and all that matters. Yeah, that's that's what helps me get over that type of shit is, the, is that I did, when I did this, I was trying to help. I did it from a spirit of, of peace. You know what I'm saying? I didn't expect anything from it. I, I wanted to help. And yep. if this is what if this is what they did with it, like Graf said, chalk that up to the game. That'd be the last motherfucking time you ever see a dime from me. You might not I even hear it. from I, me. I get it. Before I let you go, for me again, it goes to my father and that alpha male status of going, you think that you're gonna fucking play me, motherfucker. Like I it's just man. It, it's us man, bro. It's yeah. just fuck like you like weasel motherfucker. Like yeah. 
Oh, that that it's just it's that it's that's that just that just really and you you know you you know I told you I don't like when people try to play me for a bitch, man. I just mm -hmm. j that's like I know what you're doing, and it just that's one thing I've I've gotten better with. Um, one not not I because what I say is listen, I don't want to ruin our friendship because you're not gonna fucking pay me back, dude. I I've right. been there before. I don't want it, and that's the part that sucks too. Is these people were close friends of mine. And I, I like being friends with them. You know what I'm saying? That's right. the part that sucks too. Is you you lose a fucking you lose a friend. But anyways, they were, they no, were, there is no close. karma. Uh -uh. They were too close. They no. were too close. There is no karma. I don't believe in karma. I don't believe in it. I don't believe. I appreciate that, Bert. I know karma. Karma helps us mentally deal with shit. Saying that you know, hey, something's gonna happen with them, and that makes you feel better. But there is no karma. But go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I, no. I want to know this because I seen I seen Phil in the comment section speaking on his anxiety, um, saying pretty much that you know wherever he came up at, um, that people thought he was white. Well, you 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 take the floor, brother. I, I want to know. I want to tell us a little bit about your story and what you got going on. Well, so I, I was my parents were lucky enough to get out. My mom's from Oakland and my dad's from Kentucky, uh, Louisville, Kentucky slash Columbus, Ohio. So my family moved from back, half the family moved from back east, the other half was already out here. So they met at San Jose State, <coughs> hooked up there, did what they do, and here's, here's your boy. So your boy grew up in West San Jose his entire life. Okay. And all my life, I've been one of five black people in a classroom, one of 20 at a school, and up until the time that we hit high school and whatnot. At which point, everybody, because I got an education, learned how to speak, read, and write, and don't walk and wasn't running around up in them streets like that. Everybody, nobody really fucked with me. I was always yeah. that goofy mother, whitewash motherfucker. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure Steve, uh, Stu said he was the blackest person in the live when we were on it on it the other day. <laughs> I did, I did. I was talking shit. I was talking shit. <laughs> You know, oh, said, whitewash, whitewash. I never heard that. I never heard that term, whitewash. Nobody would ever say it to you, Stu. Well, I'm just saying. I mean, I, I've I've heard you know that. So whitewash. What does whitewash mean? Well, because I don't walk around and act a certain way. Probably similar to some of the gentlemen okay, that used to associate with okay. back so in the day. I yeah. Okay, I got you. I got you. Okay. All right. But okay, but what did that what did that do to you mentally? Like like did that like create a did that create a complex like like I'm not black enough? Yeah, but I was gonna say you're, you're not you're not mm -hmm. you're stuck, you're kind of you're not really a part of any group, right? I mean you kind right. of feel alone, wouldn't you? A little bit or That's exactly what it is and going through and not really and fucking up your whole your whole fucking social social life because it's like well shit, how do I approach people? Never knowing really how to talk to people. And, it, and it's funny because no, it never. It was the hardest thing for me till I was like, you know what? I don't give a fuck what any of you have to say. Honestly, if I was to sit here and pit and start naming off all the shit that you got wrong in your life and that you're doing, you have no reason to say anything about me. So I'm just gonna do me and just be cool about it. Yeah, but see, the, the thing that kills me is you can't be educated. You can't be. You can't. You can't like. This is the thing that people get fucked up about. Just not even just color, but the areas we grew up in. Some of the smartest people in the world come from these areas, right? Mm -hmm. Like, 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 why does it matter if you if you speak proper or you do this or you do that? Now, look, where I came from, it was I was the opposite. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't even know I was white. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like wait, you wait, wait, you're white. Bro, you ever watched that Dave Chappelle? Look at you ever watched that Dave Chappelle I stand up? God, I didn't know you were white for. And you ever I watched thought... that Dave Chappelle stand up still or, 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 or Phil, where he said, "Watch that white guy in that in that in that group of black because you don't know what he did to earn their respect." Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's exactly. You right. know that that white motherfucker over there is crazy to be that able to me. be accepted by them. He is crazy. You're that right. No, me. you're 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 right. You're right. You're right. Nobody ever me. called me a honky. Nobody ever called. I didn't know any of those terms. Right. I, only, only, only derogatory term I ever got was being called the N-word going into the suburbs. So I never got the, the white boy or this or that. The only racism I experienced was being called the N-word. Ain't that crazy? Going to visit my mom in, in the suburbs of Atlanta, I never got called white boy or cracker, you know what I mean? Whatever the hell. All the, 
I got called the N word by, yeah. by rich ass white folks in them suburb areas when I went to go visit my mom. So that made me create a, that a complex was created in my head. Like fuck these white motherfuckers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like because it, I was like, why, why, why are they doing this? Like, like why are they doing this? So my brother, I completely understand because I was 12, 13 years old going and visiting, leaving my hood where I'm from and going to this nice area to go visit and, and being called this by people that got money and, and, and you know, and, and blah, blah, blah. So I, I feel you on that, like, bro. But at the end of the day, if anybody took the time to get to know Phil, he's a great brother. And, and I don't give a fuck what color you are. Like, you are who you are, bro. I, I hate this. You acting black, you acting white, you acting Mexican. What the fuck are you talking about? How can you act the color? I, I just, I, I get the stigma because, you know, these days everybody uses it. Oh, Graf, you know, you talk like you got some brother in you. Woo, woo, woo. I talk like me. That's it. I don't talk like. It's a, it's a dialect. It's a man. fucking, I mean, it's it's a regional dialect. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what but I mean? Still, like, I, Sorry, sorry, uh, Doc. No, no, go, go ahead. Go still ahead. about you growing up and being, you know, four out of, you know, one out of four, you know, black yeah. guys in the in the area. I had a friend. I had a friend like that, Gerald Sly, one of my best friends, and I'll have him on the show. And the thing he really struggled with was the women. He was cool with all the women, but they didn't really want to take it to that next step and you know be sexual with a black dude. One because Maybe they just were scared or to their parents. They didn't want their fucking, you know. So I always felt bad for Daryl because he always had all these great friends. But when it came down to the women, like, making that next step, it was always tough. And I, I don't know how that was for you. Was that an issue? Well, hold on. What, was this a black? You say this was a black dude growing up in a white area? No, Stu. A, a black I, I, guy I that grew I up that, I was one of my best friends. Like, so you're asking me, did I get bitches back in the day? No, <laughs> that, that's that's kind of how I'm feeling like this. I'm, I'm listening no, to what no, you I, <laughs> well, I'm just saying. I just know. I just know that was an issue. I mean, for I, and when you're talking about like, you know, um, getting you know street credit or whatever from other, but the women side of it. I mean, was there an issue with that? Did you feel there was an issue? No. Nah. No. Okay. So let me ask you this, Phil. It, it, was, it wasn't because of a racial thing, to be honest with you. If anything, that probably would have helped out more than anything. It, it, was, a, it was more of a sense of just like, like not, not belonging, not, not knowing what was what, where, where, I, where, I really fell, where I really fell in with everybody. Because I was like, I'm looking at all the shit everybody else is doing. I'm like, yo, that's not me. I'm like, yeah. like y'all out here wilding. In high school, I'd be like, I don't really feel the need to go out there and do all of that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So let me ask you this, Phil, if you don't mind. Are you in a relationship now? Yes. Is she white? Yes. Now, is it because not, 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 color is no, there should be no barriers at all, right? But mm -hmm. do you think maybe because of that connection to how everybody used to treat you that, like, were you, were you ever judged by black women as well? Or was it just all the time, still do. <laughs> okay, okay, still do. I, I listen, bro. Well, you, you know what them looks look like. Yeah. Oh, when, definitely. When you walk, you bro, know bro. Like. I, yeah. I got a black you wife and kids. Look like and, and, I live in, and I live in Texas. Shit. Right. Dude, I know. No, I know. Yeah. 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 So I get it. Yeah. I get it. And I lived in Atlanta too. So the South South, like right. we yeah. used to look. Yeah. I, I literally had to stop, like, from yeah. A, a couple times, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, I completely understand where you're coming from, brother. Yeah. I get it. I get it. But I just feel like, man, that sucks. That like that, the stigma of, of being acting out of your color or your race or your blah, like, I, I hate that. I, I hate that because it mentally puts you in a situation where you're like, can I even trust my own people, right? My own people. Mm -hmm. Like, right? And, and I don't even mean own, because it shouldn't be own people. Human right. beings should be own people, period, right? right? But there is a divide, and we all know it. There is a colorism, like Greg said. It's called colorism, right? Where we divide everybody, we put everybody to where they are. You need to be here, you need to be here. Well, look, we're in 2021 now. That shit doesn't even matter. But there is some people that still use that to effectively divide all of us. You know what I'm saying? 
It just yeah. is what it is. You know what I'm saying? If Derek Carr was black, I'd be fucking with him, y'all. <laughs> I mean, well, okay, let, so let me ask you guys this. Let me ask you guys this. <laughs> are, are, with, with, with so many, when you talk about mental illness uh-huh. and the awareness of mental illness, it, it, it almost teeters on sometimes where I think like someone's always got to apply a, a condition to every little fucking thing that somebody has. And some of it's just like, dude, you just got to grow through that shit, man. That's just part of growing up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So how do you, how do you separate if there really is a mental illness or are we just, again, with the big drug companies and, and, and fucking medicating and everyone has an issue and everyone needs a pill with some shit. Like, do we, do we, in some instances, don't take it serious enough. And in other instances, do we do we maybe use it as a crutch when it shouldn't be? That's a good question. That is. You know what I mean? That's a very good question. A kid, a kid can all oh, my kids, my kids, you know, doesn't pay attention, is rude because he has ADHD. And it's like, no, your kid's a fucking asshole, and you need to teach him some fucking manners. That's true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, let me ask. Let me, let's, let's, let's. I mean, what do you, I mean? What do you guys think on that? I mean, do you think there's, it's a it's a it's a definitely a combination of things, and you know, it's a balancing act when you all when you go back and look at it. You know, there's so many things that you can do at an early age that throw people off that throw people off, and you never ever know who's going to respond to what. Like say say take your kids for instance, when you get tired of them and it's time for bed, you throw them in the bed, you turn the light off, shut the door, walk away, right? That's what most normal people do. Well, let's say 10 years down the road, your kid is still afraid of the dark because he was traumatized from that shit. Takes that, takes that. Somebody teases him about it at school. He fucking loses it, beats their ass. And now you got to Now you got a whole new set of issues that stem from putting a kid in the bed, in the crib, with no light on and shutting the door. Well, because too, you, you got to think, okay, by you introducing that child to this condition actually makes that condition become the truth because you introduced it to him and now it's it's something that he becomes? Or do you ignore it, you don't even bring it up, and... It's something if you're not even talking to him about it, he doesn't realize that there's anything wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like it's almost like you're you're creating it by introducing him to these doctors and, and evaluations. And now because of that, he's labeled and then that he buys into what they're selling him. Right. <clears throat> no, that would and that's that's you know, usually how it goes. That's usually how it goes. You know and, what I mean? Like once you make it an issue, it becomes an issue. But if you right. just you know if you just kind of get through it and you, you, you monitor it and you don't make a big deal out of some shit, it just kind of fucking passes through. It works itself out naturally. I feel with, with, with the anxieties and, and the stuff that you deal with, brother, how do you, how do you cope with um, when you go through an episode or, or do you go through episodes or, or like, how do you deal with what you deal with in terms of anxiety or just mental health in general? Um, badly. To be honest with you, I'm not any better at dealing with it than anybody else is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I try put I focus on what I absolutely have to do to get through a day to make sure mm-hmm. that my family's cool, mm-hmm. and I st- and I do that and, and I self medicate proudly proudly admit it. Yeah. See, and that that's the thing too that people don't realize. Well, you're getting shit done and you're you're being productive. It's like you not you you would you have no idea what it takes for me to do some of the simplest shit. I might make it look normal, but my shit inside my fucking head and how I had to prepare and how I was worried about it the night before. And like, there's a lot of shit that goes along with it. And just cause I'm not walking around looking crazy. Doesn't mean I'm not fucking uh hamster in the fucking wheel in my fucking head. You know what I'm saying? Let me, let me get this in. I, I, Real quick, shout out to Sandra. She just dropped a, a dropped a fifty shot. God damn! Um, thank you, Sandra. Appreciate you for real, for real. When when you were in my when you're a minority in this country and you find a level of success, 
You can't forget where you came from because if you do, you shit on everything the parents and grandparents worked so hard for so that you could have that level of success. Uh, look, I completely agree with you, but let me ask you this. What is not forgetting where you come from? Because because this, this is, I've had somebody tell me I forgot where I came from, right? Because I moved out of the hood and I live in the suburbs and I'm raising my kids in a different environment, which is a lot more safer, right? So what, it, I, Sanjay, I want to know, what do you mean by that? Is it, is it maybe, because I know a lot of things that I want to do for my community. I, I've been thinking behind the scenes of creating some shit where I can help South Sacramento, for, help the kids, create some foundations. There are some things I want to do, and I'm, clo I'm getting closer to my goal of being able to do that because, you know, I, now I have, I don't have to work in a corporate setting where it's just completely just every day, 12 hours of my life. Now I can move around as I please. But I want to know, like elaborate a little bit on that, Sandra, if you can, because, and thank you, love, for, for the 50 shot, for real, for real. I appreciate you on that. Appreciate oh, you yeah. on all the support you get. Um, shout out to Independently Blind. This is Oakland night for you, guys, for you guys who don't know. Shout out to my dog, man, my OG. I live day by day, week by week, month by month. And mind you, he's legally blind. Knowing my shit's going to get worse. I always have to keep myself in a positive state of mind. Much love and respect to you all. And Oakland Knight, if everybody can adopt that mindset, we'd all be we'd be in a totally different, a better world. I met him, right? I met yes. him. Yes. Yeah. 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 He's cool as hell. That's my guy. And he's such a good hearted guy. Great person. And this is someone, you guys, that like he said, no one is just going to get worse. So basically what he's saying is his vision is, is going to consistently, constantly get worse. But he takes it day by day, and he's still here. Look, he's fucking, he's writing. He's writing in the comment section. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Like, this is someone that's legally blind. That shit to me is just like, wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Oakland, you know, my brother, if you ever need anything from us, bro, you know. You know what it is. You ain't. See, you see and, that, and that's the thing that sometimes when I am in, in one of those situations where I'm feeling down and I'm feeling like I'm worthless and I'm feeling like what the fuck's the point. And then I'll see a dude walk, you know, in a wheelchair with one leg fucking, you know, he's, he's fucking probably has never done shit in his life. And he's just fucking with a smile. Like he's just the happiest motherfucker on the earth. And I'm sitting here, that dude probably has had a fucking tough life. Yeah. Got nothing expected. Got probably no one that fucking cares about him. And I'm sitting here with all the shit that I have and I'm going to fucking end my fucking life. And I'm like, like, it's, it's like, what the fuck, man? So it's, yeah. sometimes it's like, you just, you, you, you feel sorry for yourself. And I don't know if that's, I mean, obviously it's the illness and it can make it worse, but yeah. it's still you, for me, the power of your mind and telling your mind that shit don't matter. Yeah. And that, you are happy. And it's almost like you fake it till you make it. That, yep. that's, that's like a real thing. Shit. You that's know what I'm saying? Like, that's a real thing. Like, if you think negative all the fucking time, it's just going to get worse. You have to tell yourself, like, fuck it. I'm going like, to put myself in a good fucking mood. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever it is. Like, getting on here. Like, there's days where I'm like, yeah, I don't really. And I get on. And, and within a 30 seconds, I'm like, boom, I feel so much better. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's and that's why that's why I, I I came back so quick because I didn't want to allow any troll or anybody that wanted to try to shit on my program to get the to, to win. You yep. know what I'm saying? Like yep. because this right yep. here, this right here is the best shit in the world to be able to talk to people about this. And we all in here just telling it as it is. I'm still trying to figure out a way to deal with my mental health, you know what I'm saying, without overindulging indulging in alcohol or, or other mm -hmm. things. What I love about Phil was he was point blank he said, I happily say it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I deal with my shit the way, whether it's drinking, smoking, whatever you got going on, yeah. point blank period. This is how I deal with it. But he's not saying, he's not he's not glorifying it. He's just saying, look, this is what it is. This is how I deal with it. And, and to be honest, I would never judge you for that, brother, because I'm still in that same place. Yeah. I, I, but I'm at a point, though, where I don't, I'm not, I don't, I used to feel sorry for myself growing up, right? I used to hate, mm -hmm. I used to, I used to hate the world, because I'm like, why I grow up with no mom or dad? Why am I in this environment? Why do I have this going on? Why do I have this going on? I don't do that anymore, right? Because I worked my ass off and I found a, I found a happy place to, 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 to move in. And don't get me wrong, it, it's a big part of it is my wife. Meeting my wife, meeting the right people, 
with yeah. the, that kind of energy yeah. to inject into your life. This is why it's so big. I have best friends that I don't talk to anymore. I love them to death, and they know not to call me because I told them not to. You know why? Because I know exactly what they're doing right now. Right now. Right mm -hmm. now. They're, they're doing completely nothing. They're sitting on the block, drinking their fucking life away, no job, no nothing, not try, not taking care of their kids. That's one big thing. Yeah. Not taking care of your kids, leave me the fuck alone. Like, like yeah. I, I don't, if you're not taking care of your responsibility as a man, I don't even want nothing to do with you. Now, if clinically, you know what I'm saying? Like, like it's a point where you, the doctors are like, you know, you can't, you can't mentally, he's not prepared or safe enough to even be around his. It may be a little, maybe we can have a discussion, yeah. but these guys just rather just drink, drink their money away, drink their life away, smoke their life away and not do shit for their kids. At that point, it's like, I can't fuck with you. Me and my daughter, uh, we have an up, uphill battle with me and her. My daughter's 20 years old. Like I said before, I've said this on lives before. I had her when I was 16 years old. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's a little tricky with me and her because me and her mom ain't cool at all. You know what I'm saying? Right. So we try to, I try to work around it. So me and her, every day it's a constant battle trying to right that relationship, right? We have our ups, we have our downs, we have our complete fallouts, and then we have our everything is great. And right now we're going through a complete fallout. And it sucks because her brother's a FaceTimer. They want to talk to her. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it sucks. I deal with that constantly because I put myself as a kid, I did some dumb shit thinking I was untouchable. And now I'm dealing with the consequences, right? Yeah. Um, but hey, Doc. Go ahead, brother. When I had my training business, you know, I had my daughter. I had my second daughter. Mm -hmm. and I wanted kids, but I've always, since I was fucking like in sixth grade, wanted that son. And like I, would be, I would mm -hmm. be, I would be training these athletes in Saginaw, right? Uh -huh. And the 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 kid, I'm sitting here looking at these kids that are tall, athletic, funny, uh, smart, you know, and. I'm sitting there going, man, I would, I would love to have my son if I ever had a son, or I'd love to have you as my son. And then you got these motherfuckers that don't give a fuck. And I'm sitting there going, there are people that spend thousands and thousands of dollars and go through so much stuff because they can't have a kid. And then some of these motherfuckers have these wonderful kids. And they don't, they don't, they don't even acknowledge them. And I'm thinking, like, what type of asshole motherfucker do you? So I respect anybody that takes care of their fucking kids is in their life. Yeah, because it's not easy. It's, it's not. It, oh no, it's easier to leave. Absolutely, oh, yeah. it definitely would have been. It's, it's definitely easier to leave. It's definitely just say, you know what, fuck this shit. I'm out. Blah, and you know what? Maybe in some shit. But I, but I can I can assure you that fucks kids up and, yeah. and I and I deal with that constantly. Hey, look at me. I, when I met my when I met my wife, she had she already had a relationship and she had a son and and, it, and without trying to get too far in my business and put it all out there, trust me, I've gone through every conceivable possible shit show you could ever imagine with the court system, with the child himself, with what they've been putting in this boy's head. Yeah, it, it, it's been insane, and it sucks because only the kid at in the end of the day is gonna be the one that that's fucked up with it. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, I like with me, I always say this, and I I overcompensate for my sons because of the shit I had to go through with my wife, with my daughter, um, and, and and growing up without my parents, I overcompensate for them both. You know what I mean? And, and sometimes it's to my detriment because I don't want to raise two spoiled ass kids. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. They're very, they have big hearts. They're just good ass kids. So they deserve everything they get. You know what I mean? Like, I, and I know. Do you know why they're good kids? Well, because they came from their mama. No. <laughs> Here's the deal. It's because you had two good parents on the same page, constantly teaching them how to be good kids. Because when kids are born, they're, we are we, the human being, the, the 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 species that we are. We are a very selfish, fucking ruthless species. We kids don't come out polite. Kids don't come out caring for other people. Kids come out 
They're very, very. Uh, they will. They will kill their their fucking brother in the womb yeah. to survive. Yep. They will take my, my mine. Mine almost did. Yeah, they will. You, you. They will go up and take what they want. Yeah, they are not born with that type of mentality. We're not that. We're not that type of creature. But no. parents, and I, I used to sit there and go, man. Every day I'm just yelling at, I mean, the same things like boom, boom, boom. But I'm like, you know what? It's like a good coach. Stay low on your back pedal. When you're breaking yep. right, plant left. And if you get, if, if, if you're not doing it every day on them, if, that's your fucking job as a parent to teach them how to fucking be. Because naturally they're not that way. It needs to become, have, obviously there's going to be some kids born nicer than others, but. I don't know too many babies that are gonna fucking look out. I mean, they're 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 trying to fucking they're out, but they're about to fucking selves, man. And, and it, it's yep. funny though. It's funny still how that how that story kind of correlates with your earlier story, right? And this is why I can't be mad at you and I can't beat you up for giving that guy another chance. I know this may be completely different circumstances, but my son, right, Elijah, was four pounds. They were both preemies. My other son, Jaden, was two pounds. My, my, my other son, Elijah, kept taking all the food in my wife's stomach, taking all of it, yeah. hogging it all up. Yeah. So yes. they, both came, they both came out. They both had to be in the NICU for a long time. Guess which one came out first? My fighter, my two-pounder. He went home first, and my four-pounder ended up staying a little longer, right? These guys are inseparable. They're best friends. Not even knowing that one of them could have actually killed the other. Is there you a difference? Even, yeah, you don't even know. Now? So, but, but that, it just kind of correlates with where your heart is. It's like you know this guy could have potentially did something to you. But the way your heart is, though, bro, it's like you want to, as a human being, a good one at that, you always want to give people second chances. But th there's a thing in this world where we all have to come to terms with. Not everybody deserves a second chance. No, you're, you're You know, you're right. everybody doesn't deserve that because they're going, look, the fool me once, shame on me, or shame on you shit, fool me twice, shame on me shit is true. It's definitely Hell, true. Yes. That's, that's definitely true. The first time that's, that's really not true. you. The second time that's that's my fucking that's fault. I can't even really yeah. be mad at you. Again, it's like the scorpion and the frog or whatever. Yeah. Like, he I ain't gonna I ain't gonna I ain't gonna hit you or whatever. And then they get over there and bow. Like, dude, you said you weren't gonna do it. He's like, bro, I'm a scorpion. What the fuck? Yeah. What the yeah. fuck you know? I didn't yeah. know. What did you think, bro? Hey, like, I bite you as soon as I get close. Like, just, but there's still some times where I'm going. There's bro, no I used to go way. to parties. I used to go to parties. And I used to bring my homeboys a bunch of bloods. We go to a house party. I'm like, bro, don't start nothing. Next thing you know, the party gets beat up, shut down, shot, shot up. And then at the end, I'm like, bro, what the fuck? I told you. That. And they're like, bro, we're gang members. Like, what the fuck? What do you expect? <laughs> there is still, like, bro, there like, is still sometimes on that frog and that scorpion going, he ain't gonna do it again. Like they. they they ain't gonna do it. Again. They're they're not that fucking stupid. It's almost to where I'm like, I'm like, I just I'm, I'm just gonna see if this motherfucker really has the fucking balls to do the shit again. And typically, like, motherfucker did it again. God damn it! Yeah. Like, it's, I'm like, there's no fucking way this dude can. After se I know this and and guaranteeing that and I pro and I'm going. There's no way. There's no. There's no fucking. There's no nope. way. And they. They just do it. They just do it again, and I'm like, but and it's because they know they, they know they know that you have a big heart and that you're gonna allow them to get over. It just it is what it is. Mm -hmm. You're saying like like this is what Chess said. Your heart will tell you whether or not someone deserves a second chance. And, See, and you know what's I, weird though? I listen to that now. I don't listen to this anymore. I listen weird. to that. You know what's weird though is 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 I'm patient. I'm 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 nice to people. But at the same time, I, I don't give up. Like, I don't get it because I'm cold at the same time. Like, I don't show a lot of emotion. I don't have a lot of empathy, right? Like, I'm a pretty cold dude. But for some reason, on some shit, like, I'm, 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 I have a warm heart. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, I don't know how I, I, I disagree with you. I, I think you think that, but I think the nation knows completely otherwise. Uh, I, think you you think been, I think you condition yourself to be cold because your warm heart gets you into trouble that's closer yeah. to the reality of what it is is that given that having that warm heart you get burned so many times by people who try to take advantage of you whether it's a big yeah. big advantage or a little advantage it's all always something and it's and it's never just reciprocating the love that you give out it never just comes straight back the way that you give it out 
and when, and once you get you once you've gotten used to that, you've been like, you know what? It's fuck everybody. If, if I'm not fucking with you, it's fuck you. I just don't think that any that you would be cold hearted because all three of us have a platform, right? We've always opened our platform to anybody and everybody, um, especially you know, Stu, with you being a former player of a team that we all just love to death, right? You for you opening your platform and allowing fans to come on and talk regular life with you, talk football with you, that speaks volumes, bro, because yeah. you, you don't see other guys doing that. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, bro, you can say I'm cold hearted. I don't have any empathy. Let me, I, let me, okay, I, I, I got to call bullshit on that. Well, let me say this. Let me put it this way, I think. And I'm just now talking. You have to think about conversation. Like you talk yourself into some shit you didn't even realize. Like you, you figure out some shit just through talking. But yeah. I think what it is, is I don't, I don't have a lot of patience for, really for real. like somebody like, Bro, yeah, people die, man. Like, let's move on. Like, let's get the fuck. Like, we got shit to do, man. Like, yeah, fucking, you know what? Like, um, shit's not fair. Or like, I don't have a lot of like again with like with the football players. Like, dudes talking about all this shit off the field. Like, I don't give a fuck. I do not get because people didn't give a fuck about my personal feelings. So as far as personal feelings go, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I guess I'm that way. Like, I don't have, like, oh, but this person, like, some people are always, oh, oh, I'm like, I don't know that motherfucker. Fuck them. Real quick. Shout to Paz. He's in, this is another man, another reason I did this show tonight, right? My bro reached out to me, and he said he's going through a very, very difficult time right now. Um, He said, graphic, I'm here like you asked me to. And, uh, And, yeah. I want you... You know, I would love to have you come in, but if you if you don't want to, brother, it's okay. Please continue to put your comments in the comment section. Um, he's going through a rough time right now, a rough period where he feels useless, hopeless, um, having negative thoughts, um, really looking at life like ain't shit out here no more. You know what I'm saying? And mind you, this guy has a family, mm-hmm. uh, a beautiful family at that. He's just trying to get by every day like all of us dealing with these demons and these and just battling with himself on a constant basis. Um, he said, I, I, I'm here. I, I'm just emotional. And, and brother, this is the place to be for that. Um, yeah. Because, go ahead, go ahead, Stu. Go ahead. Uh, I, was, I was just, I had something to say to Paz, but it made me think of one of our friends who about a month ago was in some very rough times, Docs, and you know who I'm talking about. Yes. He is, he is, He's doing super well. He's about 25, 26 days sober. He's got his job. He's he's doing good. He's back on track. So our brother's I, actually, he's actually here with us right now. Okay. So I didn't want to, I mean, I'm sure he doesn't care, but you know, he knows who I'm who I'm talking about, man. He's he and here's the deal. Here's what here to be honest with you. I I I backed off him for a little bit because I felt I was providing a crutch for him. And sometimes yeah. you just gotta, you gotta just handle your shit. You know right. what I mean? You just at some point you just got you gotta. And I've been there where I feel comfortable, and but I don't ever really get anything done. And, and also when that person stops talking, like, well, shit, you 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 get the shit taken care of. And I've I've always said this, man. Again, as as worse as bad as you think it is, as bad as you think it is. And always Give get it worse. 24 hours. Get better. Give it 24 hours. Then give it another 24 hours. Then give it another 24 hours. Shit will shit will be okay. Unless you're dead or you fucking killed. I mean, even that. <laughs> Don't get dark, Stu. <laughs> no, I'm just, no, I'm just saying like. I know what you're saying, though. As long as you can come. Whatever you did that's got you in that mood. Um, for one, it's not as bad as you think it is. Yes. We're always, we always think it's so much worse, right? Yes. We, right. I'm the worst motherfucker. Everyone knows what the fuck. Uh, and it's like, I- I'll tell you this, Paz. You know what's so crazy, brother? You're at the worst point in your life right now, right? That's what you think. I, I feel like you when I'm at the top. So it's so crazy how life works, right? Like it- it's, it's so weird because when I'm struggling, I'm used to that. I came from that. So, like, 
I feel like that's just the normalcy of, of my life. But then when I get at the top of the where, where, I'm, where I'm doing the best, that's when the depression kicks in. And maybe it's because I start thinking more outside, like, what can I do for my people that that aren't doing this good yet? But then I realize the depression even kicks in more harder because they don't want to do better. They can say they want to do better, but they're not doing the work in order to do better. And and, and anyone that is willing to put the work in, like Ruckus said, he said he, he, he and he said, bro. 40 plus days. He didn't say 29. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So that's even better. But if you're willing to do the work, I'm willing to do the work with you. You know what I'm saying? Like whatever, if you're willing to do the work, I'm willing to do the, do the work with you because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, man. We seen um, uh, Donna, is it Donna Carol? Who was it? It was somebody millionaire, Robin Williams, millionaire. These people are at the top of their, uh, top of their profession and they still off themselves. So, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter how good you're doing or whatever you're doing. You could be like I'm gonna be honest. Sometimes I wish I can have the homeless person out there's freedom. I no wish I shit. Have, no I shit. Wish no I wish I could shit. have that. So so I don't have to stress about how I'm gonna feed my sons in the morning. How 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 I can do this for my for my wife. How I can do this for my daughter. I just look at that. Sometimes I go and I envy them. I'm like, damn. There there's a there's there there's a there's a there's a um. Go on. Thank you, brother. I, I wanted to say this. Here's another thing that is a factor is, is, is what are people's religious beliefs? That goes into how they look at themselves. I know for me, when I was growing up Catholic, I believed that, um, uh, how do I want to say this? I believed that, God damn it. Fuck, how did I want to say that? Let me see. Um, I was thinking of... Shout out to everybody in the chat, you guys. Hit them thumbs up, man. I appreciate you guys. And while Stu's trying to get their thoughts together, okay. look at the bottom. The National Suicide Prevention Hotline is down here, 800-273-8255. If you ever need to speak to someone and you're not comfortable enough to reach out to one of us, in the inbox or anything, or you feel like it's it's past that point, please call that number, reach out to them. Also, our brother Raider Squid, our our our, our family, our brother uh, to this show, especially. I mean, he he supports the channel all across the board, but definitely reach out to him as well. Raider Squid will be there night and day to speak to you guys, whether you're having a low, you're having a high, good, bad, whatever. Reach out to any of us. We're all here, but that number is definitely down there just in case. And um Still, I don't know if you still. I know you're struggling over there right now. So no, no, here, no. Here's what here, I, I had a point, but I'll, I'll go on a different point with the, the whole religion thing. Is 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 there are certain religions that make you feel really bad about doing shit that's not that fucking bad that a lot of people fucking do, and you'll have a lot of motherfuckers in those religions standing up there giving you you don't do this and you don't do this. While behind closed doors, they're doing some fucked up shit. And that feeling of going, holy shit, I, and if you're a true and true believer in whatever religion it is, I just offended the creator and possibly my chance of going to heaven or para or whatever it is. And that, that can draw, that can really come down on you. I mean, that, that can put you in a, in a depressed fucking mood for me. I think all religions are hypocrisy. Um, yeah, I don't do religion. I do God. It's, 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 again, I grew up and I remember just looking at it and I'm sitting here going, you guys are telling me what not to do and what this to do and that. And then you guys are doing some shady fucking shit. And I'm going, all of this is, it's all, it's all fictional. None of it has been proven by science. Nobody knows. Nobody fucking knows. And I, I had a conversation with Moni about this. I said, I do know, like, when we die, do you know what happens, Docs? I don't. Do you know what happens, Phil? No. Does anybody? No. No. Nobody knows, right? No. Nope. I know this. I got a pretty good idea of what I'm doing tomorrow. I've lived where I'm in a pretty good routine. I kind of know what to expect in this life. Yeah. This life is not a dress rehearsal. I know that. So right. why am I going to be in a rush 
to fucking go somewhere that I have no fucking idea what happens. Well, this conversation is not going in the wrong direction because guess what? I'm going to say, regardless, religion is religion is gangbanging. Everybody, period. It is. So you think take it back to the Crusades and see what they did there. It was lar large scale game. Religion, religion, religion is, is about power scale. and money. And here's yes. the deal. You could have, I always say this. You could have this, this group believes in Jesus. This group believes in Stuart, right? And these motherfuckers come in and pretty much if the Jesus soldiers wipe out the Stuart soldiers, no one knows that Stuart was a fucking religion. But that religion that won is going to promote their God because yeah. that promotes them. They grow in groups. They have followers. That creates power, money, all that shit. It's, it's all, to me, as long as you believe in something, you believe that there's a higher power out there. I've, I've really gotten into uh, what the point of life is, why we're here. And all of these religions, here's the deal. I don't know how many different religions there are, but if religion is a real thing, only one can be right. Only fucking one. There's only one truth, right? There's not two truths. There's only one. And real quick, how many wars have been fought. Sorry, I know I'm. No, 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 no. What's funny is. I really don't want to go that route because then, then we're just going to open up a fucking. No, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, yeah. I know. But what I'm bringing into the mental part of it, though, for for people who are in these religions, and you have someone telling you, "Oh my God, that is a yeah, sin, and yeah. you shouldn't be doing that," and it, it can affect you. Listen, Paz and Jonathan, I put the link in the comment section. If you guys want to pull up and come talk with us, you have all the right to come and speak with us, brother. Uh, Squid, if you got some time, you could definitely come on and talk as well. But the, the link is up there. Um, Diego, if any of you guys want to speak, um, come talk with us for a minute. It's all good, my brother. A uh, shout out to Phil, man. Phil got to get out of here. Um, uh, Phil's taking you. off. Yeah, yeah. I got to take off. But wore me out last night, Stu. I, I like that piano back there, bro. You need to play That's the beautiful. piano next time. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll hit you with that Beethoven right quick. Show you I how like I get it. it out. I like that fireplace up. <laughs> hey, love you, brother. Hey, hey go right. ahead. Hey, I'm going to send you a link to one of these upcoming shows. I want you to come pull up and talk with me. All right. All right, my brother. I want to be very, very upfront and honest with everyone that's in here. Oh, your Wi-Fi looks fire right now. Let's go. Does it? Hell Ooh. yeah, brother. I, you can, it is, here's the problem that people have in this fucking world is I have no problem with you agreeing or disagreeing with me. That's what makes, that's what makes life interesting. And that's how you learn. It's getting yeah. two perspectives. Yeah. As long as what you believe in, you have facts to support it. You've you've been either you have facts to support it, you've you've gone through it, and you have a reason for it. Other than that, we, we don't have to agree on everything. Who wants to fucking agree on everything? I like what Jamie said. He said religion should not make you feel worse. If it does, get out. That is there a you problem. go. Bro, oh, that was a bar. That's a good that one. was a haymaker right there. Talk and that shit. Religions, to be honest, talk that with shit, you. Jamie. Let's go. Let's go. They do. They do. Who we got? Who, who's dirty? Up? I don't know what happened. Dirty. Okay, dirty. Jonathan, what's up, brother? Oh, your mic's off. There you go. Yo, what's good, docs? What's got what's going on, brother? Nothing much. I'm in my dorm right now. Okay, now I've been waiting for this conversation. Shout out to Jonathan. He's a huge advocate for the mental health show. Hold on. Who are who? Yeah, who's in here right now? Uh, we got Squid, Raider Squid, um, and we have our brother Jonathan. Squid is on the right. Oh, okay, okay. Never mind. That's, that's you'll see him on on at the games and all kind of stuff. Squid is okay. It's down right here is Jonathan. Yes, that's Jonathan. Dirty, I got you back there, brother. Bring you on in a second. So, Jonathan, all right, now, no, look, because I love that. I love that squid pulled up at the same time. This is beautiful. Get, get. What, what are you dealing with, my brother? I know that you said that you know college is is really tough. Um, I know that you said that you deal with, uh, like food, right? Like, eat. Is it eating? That's an issue. Sp speak on it, brother. Put, put, put your, put it out there. And let's talk about it, man. Yeah. So ever since the COVID pandemic. Um, like I haven't been the same and mostly like due to depression and anxiety. I didn't know what it was growing up. 
I know something that wasn't talked about in my household. Like I come from a Mexican family and I'm also like the child of immigrants. And it's definitely something that's a stigma in the Latino community. And it's something that I want to dismantle and bring more awareness of in order to like change lives and also save, save others as well. And like ever since the pandemic, I've noticed that I don't get as hungry or I don't um, like want food. And I wasn't, I wasn't like that before. Um, so I was thinking of going to um, my college's counseling center and okay. seeing like what's going on with me. Let me, let me, uh, let me ask you this real quick. It is you not, is it affecting your daily like, like routine of, like it's not are you not getting the proper food amount that you need daily now or is like like are you not eating at all i eat like maybe once or twice a day i don't eat three times anymore and it has affected me and like my energy levels because okay. i noticed that like when i don't sleep i'm so tired and i have like little to no energy and um yeah it's like really hard being a college student especially being low income and first gen, like half of the time, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, but like I know there are people out here who like want to see me succeed. No, 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 no. Bro, you're about you know, all of us want to see you succeed, but you're about you're actually knocking. I think where a lot of the anxiety and shit comes from is you have a whole backbone that's looking at you as yeah, he's the one that's gonna break down this barrier of something that none of us have ever yeah. seen before. R real quick, too, John. So you're talking about food, like to me. I, I meal prep and I, I'm not like crazy by any means of gym. Like I'm a simple meal prep. The two meals a day to me is what I do. I have breakfast. My breakfast consists of some form of shake and, and a bar and a, and an actual meal drink lunch. But that's just cause I'm simple. I live by myself right now. So the meal prepping to me, like the two meals a day to me, isn't that out of the ordinary? Cause that's what I know. And I do Monday through Thursday. Yeah. And that yeah, you, you definitely, you yes. definitely get enough. You definitely get yeah. enough food. Like it, it can be, it just depends on what those meals are. I, I think I think that's just I, I don't think that's the problem. I think that yeah. maybe you're overthinking that because of your other deals of stress yep. in other areas. I think that's, that's what I was gonna touch on. Yeah, but like yeah. my wife, my wife eats once a day. She don't yeah. eat like that. You know what I'm saying? Like with me, I ain't gonna lie, I can eat five times a day, but it, it, but you know what I mean? Like just to even have a luxury of eating once or twice a day. I mean, look, there's people in the world that don't she can barely eat, you know what I mean? So for you, brother, you still blessed. I think it's I think it's a lot on your shoulders as a young man in college. Like you said, first gen, first generation. Um, I don't think you know, Jonathan, you helped push me through my like one of my last classes thinking about you going through school. Yeah. I joined if most know I'm active duty. Like I joined not to fucking go to school. Yeah. I'm terrified that I'm in college now. Like going little by little, like a class at a time. But honestly, like the one of the first conversations, you going to school drives me to go, all right, cool. If he can do it, let me take this one class because that's what I can handle. And I, I promise you, like, I just saying that. We got Paz in the building as well. Shout out to Paz. We're we going to get to you here in a second, yeah. my brother. Go ahead. What up, brother? It's all good, good, man. It's all good. good. Thanks for your service. Of course, okay. Yeah, like. Thank you, yeah, yeah, thank you for your service, fam. Definitely, yeah, brother. Anyway, go ahead, Paz. I, I do, I've been wanting to hear what. what Go ahead. No, we're, yeah. Jonathan, we're gonna get back to you uh, as well, brother. Yeah. I, no, 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 I want, I want, Jonathan. You, you, I just want to get a little more information. So, you, you, you never before COVID, you never experienced any of the the um, symptoms that you're having today. No, that's correct. I never experienced those symptoms before. And what, what was it when you knew? What, what was the feeling that you were getting? What was there? Was there a day that you all of a sudden? you couldn't go out to class because you didn't feel prepared. What, what, what was it? What do you said? So I needed something's not working here. Right. Yeah. Um, I think it was just like the uncertainty of everything. Um, getting with COVID, uh, I was in, um, college on campus and they basically told everyone to like move out as soon as possible. Okay. Um, so they essentially had kicked us all out and being out of state, like I live in Las Vegas, um, and I'm going to, uh, university here in the Bay uh, in San Jose, Santa Clara area. Mm -hmm. And it was like so ner nerve wracking. And, and um, I, I got a lot of anxiety from that because yeah, I didn't know what was going on. Really, I can affect you. I, I think that stress though, man, you know, that stress, 
uh, uh, for like the stresses of school that can make you not want to eat as much as you used to. Yeah, absolutely. Like, absolutely. Yeah, like stress, stress is something that, that completely takes you out of your element and, and can make you do certain things outside of your, with, uh, you know, of, of your usual ways. So I, I don't think that that's uh, look, brother, this the good thing is, right. You're dealing with something that's not life or death. That, that, that's that's a, that first off, that's a great thing. So but it's but very it's normal. normal. It's very normal. Very normal. But very is there normal. any is there any thoughts or anything else coming along with 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 with, with missing that one meal out, out the day? Is it is it is there any negative thoughts? Is there any extra amount of pressure on you? Like, like what what else is going on? Because I feel like if there's something else there outside of just the food. Yeah, um, I just think that like something is wrong with me because I haven't been like this before. And like growing up, like I had a very rough childhood. Um, I didn't have as many um, like material things or goods like other um, privileged children have. Like my, my dad never really had the time to play with me or even like buy me toys. Um, and we grew up like very, very poor. And I just saw my dad struggle a lot. Yeah. And I just want to like make my family's life better. And that's why I'm in college, like in the first place. Are, are you out there by yourself? Yeah, I'm here by myself. Hey, so I'm going to be next year. You have a lot of pressure on you, brother. Do you yeah. Have friends? Have you made friends out there? No, yeah, definitely. I have friends here. Okay. Um, I'm living yeah. with them. It's yeah, a good, that's, good. that's a positive sign right there. Yeah. And, I, and I think that's one thing that we don't talk a lot about because it's weird to hear good stress. Yeah, it, 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 no, it, it yeah, absolutely right. absolutely is a good right. stress, and you use that to help push you through, like like you said with, with your pops and, and the growing up. Yep. It, 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 but, but understand this though, brother. Yeah. Your, your family, right? Your mom and dad, they are grown adults, right? You're you're you're, you're an adult. You're a young adult. You don't need that kind of pressure on you in the first place. Right, just you don't you don't got to take on that world by no, yourself, brother. Exactly. If they've gotten to this point without you going to school, they're gonna be okay. All right. If they raise someone like you with the mental capacity to be able to go to college, just because you want to help change the stigma of your family and change the dynamic of your family, bro, I, I feel like everything in your world is going exactly how it's supposed to be, bro. This is God's plan. I feel like you're doing everything you're supposed to. I know. It sucks because I know you spoke about the relationship you have with your father before about um, um, him getting on you about being Catholic and doing certain things. Or I forgot what it was that you told me before. You said something where he doesn't understand that the depression. Remember, I remember you said something like, "Get over that. Get over that shit." Right? That's that's our era. That that's our era. So because we didn't have the mental health title, right? It was just quit acting like a bitch, quit crying, yeah. go to fucking school, go to go do this, go do that. They didn't give a fuck about. What is mental health, blah, blah, blah. They didn't give a shit about that. They was just quit acting like a hoe and go. Pause me back in a minute. Dirty, I got you as well, brother. John, um, John, Jonathan, is somebody putting pressure on you? Is someone telling you, you like, you need to do this for us and, you know, we're counting on you? Or is it you just being hard on yourself? Um, I'm just being hard on myself because okay. I guess I fear that I'm not going to make it and I won't graduate. And the thing is, like, I'm trying to graduate in four years. And one of the advisors that I have, like, put me on a four-year plan. Um, and, like, me doing this for the first time, like, me being in college, like, my parents never went. And so there's, there are times where I feel like I'm doing it wrong. Um, but I just don't know. Like, I'm very, like, uncertain about, like, my future and what I'm going to do with my major and minor. Um so it's definitely now, a lot of pressure I put on myself. And, and that pressure, I, I 100% understand that pressure. But again, going back to the, the good stress, you're you're putting yourself in the... When I overthink things, and I know that's one of my biggest things, is I tend to overthink, and I get ahead of myself, and I think of too big of the picture. Like, yes, at the end of the day, I understand the big picture. I absolutely got it. I know what I want to do, where I want to be. And that's amazing to use the big... Like, don't forget about the big picture. But when that starts to overwhelm you, Simple, sum it down. I know Stu mentioned they're thinking about the 24 hours and, and that, and that's amazing. Yeah. But even and to me, when those 24 hours get too much, I've got to think about fucking let me get through hours, this day. An hour. Yeah, yeah let, let me get through this workout. I'm about to yeah. like, tomorrow's leg day for me. I dread it, but I'm going to go through leg day. Like, 
yeah. going down. And yes, I'm not going to forget about the big picture. That's what drives you. You are that first generation going through college. Yeah. Do not forget that. That's amazing. And, and brother, that trust me. Is too much. Yeah. Break it down a little bit. And there's going to be people out there yeah, that, yeah. Don't, that don't, they're not happy about you doing things as positive. Yeah. You just like, just like the shit I went through, right? Yeah, I they don't have the balls to do it. But yeah, not yeah. even that. I just looked at the video right now, right? We've been talking about some great things for two and a half hours. And there's four people that hit the dislike button. You can't make everybody happy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you can't, like, even when you're trying to do something great, you can't make everybody happy. At the end of the day, brother, no. I, feel, I feel like you're going to find your happiness. There's a lot of stress on you. And, and because of, you know, you want to be that man for your family. But right now, just be that kid going through school and enjoy yourself. Have fun. Like, you, you're out of the house. You're somewhere that you didn't grow up. You're in new surroundings. And mind you, you're somewhere where I grew up. So if you need anything, brother, you make sure to call me. I got family all through San Jose, all through Northern California. So there's some if, there, if something ever does go down or anything, you can always reach out to me. Trust me, I got people all through all through the city. Like uh, like like hey. Squid was saying, I know I know for me, like the beginning of the semester when the teacher would give you the uh, fucking um, so, syllabus. So, so, yeah, man. Like or or before like trade like I look at that whole thing as a whole, and I'm going. Oh my God, this is going to be fucking, I, there's no way I can do this. You know, it's the whole semester, all every assignment. But then if you just take it one assignment at a time, or like Squid said, you know what? I'm going to focus on breakfast. Once I get through breakfast, I'm going to focus on getting dressed. Yeah. Once I get dressed, and you just, you just kind of keep doing it just step by step. And that way it's just like, oh, all I got to do right now is just get dressed. Oh, all I got to do is go to a class for an hour. Oh, all I got to do is just, but if you look at the whole fucking, yeah. You're going to go, and I did that for years, man. I did that I for years, that. and it would drive me nuts. Yeah. Even if I, 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 brother, you, brother, you have some good problems. Some yeah. good problems. I promise you, you have some really good problems. If you were on here and you were telling us, like, I'm having really negative thoughts about this situation, then we'd, be, we'd probably be having the same conversation, but in, in, a, different, in, in a different manner. I, I feel like, brother, you are a good kid. You're on the come up. You're doing everything that your parents and God is asking of you. You're a good kid at that because you're always in here with positivity. You're never disrespecting anyone. You always keep it cool, always keep it calm, and always be honest. Brother, you are on your way. Take it day by day. You can't buy your family a house on the first year of college. No. That's not how this shit works. You can't take your family out of the struggle the second day of college. That's not how it works. You can't take your kid. You can't take your family out of the out of the ghetto the day you get your diploma. That's not how it works. It you know won't work that way. Be patient. Take your time. Once you graduate, you can start working your way up and trying to do what you can. But at the end of the day, brother, keep staying the same direction. You're on the right path. I'm I'm very happy to be able to see that I'm witnessing your journey, and I hope you continue to keep us all in it because I definitely want to see where this goes. Because I know you're destined for greatness, brother. So um, last thing I want to say is I guarantee, well, I don't guarantee, but I'm going to say 90% of the other fellow students are at some point have had the same feelings you're having. Okay. So it's not anything out of the ordinary. And some people put on a good front. I give you credit because you're coming up and saying, fuck dude. Yeah. Like, yeah, there, this does it scare me or whatever, a little bit. It's the ones who act like it does it. And then they fucking, they lose their shit completely. Yeah. Hey, Pause in Diego. I got you guys in a minute, brother. I got you guys. I got y'all. Good um, evening, fellas. Do How y'all doing? Doing my brother. Big oh, hey, real quick. I just uh, thanks for thanks for allowing me to come through, Docs. I greatly appreciate it. Um, to my man over here in the in the corner over here, who's uh in college, bro. First, I want to applaud you for even going to college. You know what I mean. First and foremost, I want to applaud you for that. You know I mean, give you your flowers right off the top. And then second, I'm going to let you know, bro, four years of college ain't easy. You understand what I'm saying? Don't put more weight on your shoulders than you can technically bear at that point in time. Because you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle for four years, my friend. You know what I mean? It's called higher education for a reason. So all you got to do really, man, is focus on focus on your studies, my guy. Because you have a you have a goal. You have a goal in mind. Don't let nothing deter you from that goal, my friend. If your if your goal is to is to better your family, just understand you won't do it your first three years out of college. 
Hey, Dirty yeah. is the Morgan Freeman of Raider Nation. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker's voice is powerful, is calm, is collective, and everything that comes out of his mouth is some real shit. Shout out to the Morgan Freeman of Raider Nation. My <laughs> brother, Dirty Raider. <laughs> the Morpheus. <laughs> but Facts. no, but seriously, you know what I mean? Like, you, you're going to have a lot on your plate, my friend. You're an adult now. You know what I mean? Um, it, is, it, does, it just doesn't come easy, my guy. It, it doesn't come easy to the person who graduated with a 5.0 in high school. They still struggle in, high, in college. You know what I mean? So you got you to gotta understand that nothing in life worth having is easy to come by. Nothing. You got to put in the work, my friend. You just got to put it in the work. And, and enjoy this time now because yes. it's our age when you have yes. kids, you have a wife, you have bills. Enjoy right now the college. Time, you enjoy College is the every best years of your life. Moment of this Hell shit. Yeah. Enjoy every second of it. You're in a new place. Have fun. Go go explore. When you feel like your mind is somewhere, go climb one of them hills in, in, San, in San Jose and just get the fuck away. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you have you have the freedom to do so. This is the time where you need to enjoy it. You're allowed to make mistakes at your age. It's part of it's part of growing up, dude. Like you're allowed to go out there, try some shit, and it's okay, man. It's you know what's okay. funny? In this four years is where you find out who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you four, your four, your first four years in college, you find out who you are. Yeah. So don't, don't, don't do anything to deter that, my guy, because you look like you're a good person. You yeah. look like you're a genuinely good person, my friend. There you go. Now I'm gonna bring Paz in real quick. I got Diego in the back. John, you good, brother? No, I'm straight. Yeah, I thank you so much for the reinsurance and the perspective on things. It definitely helps. And um, I like to keep it positive. Like like you said, Docs, um, I, I believe highly in like good energy and um, helping others along the way. So if my story like helps others um, either tonight or any other, any other day in the future, then I, I did my job um, today. So. Hey, you know what you should do tonight, Jonathan? What's that? Go find you a nice chick and get you some. Hell bags. yeah. Thursday night's college <laughs> night, man. Shit. Go, hey, there's some bad, bad women in San Jose. My wife from San Jose, so I can say that. There's some bad ones in San Jose. So go find you a little pretty little thing, you know what I mean? And, and, go, and, and go let off some of that steam, Kelly. Hell yeah, dude. You know yeah, I had me a bad one in San Jose a long time ago. Her name was Jovan. You bad hey. little. <laughs> talk that talk. Shout out to Gerardo, my man. You're doing great. Life, um, you're still way too young. You got your whole future ahead of you. I tried college, it wasn't for me, so I had to find other ways for success. It's not for everybody, but it sounds like no. it's for you. So continue that, continue to keep doing what you're doing, brother. And every day, the good thing about this life is right, every day you always find out something new about yourself. Every day, I still find something that every day. Like, like, I look at the back of my hand, like, what the fuck is that? You know what I'm saying? Like, like every day, there's something you find that's new. You know what I mean? So continue to grow, brother. Continue to keep us in the process. Continue to please uh, let us know what's going on with you. And if you ever just need to just talk, like I said, you, you, you are, we always talk in the inbox on, on IG. Continue to reach out to me, my brother. And um, like I said, go get you some ass, man. Oh, man. <laughs> brother, John. I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring pause in real quick. Hey, John, graph, you know, graph, graph. Yo, yo. I want to ask. Um, I'm looking through the comments here. Mike, what did you mean? Take it easy on Stu. What 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 is did someone what what is that from? What's that comment from? What it do? Pause. What's good? I don't even know. I didn't see nothing on there. I didn't see nothing on there, bro. On Mick, I think it's Mick. He said, "Hey guys, take it easy on Stu." He's just trying to help out. This is mental, mental health. What did I, what did I, what did I say? What negative comment did we see? We're not berating the man. We're just trying to give him some confidence and where he at in life. Either way, if it's negative, we're not even going, we're not even going to go there. Right? No, 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 no. I, I think so. Someone has like Ain't nothing negative it. here, man. Yeah. Pause. What's going on with you, brother? <laughs> What's going on with you, brother? How you been? I, I've been blessed, man. You know, um, you know, we all go through this shit, bro. And I, I, I love that you came on here because you were one of the inspirations, him and you and Jonathan, about doing this show, about bringing this show actually back. Because it's been a little while since I've done it because, I'm going to be honest, I've been kind of hiding from this because I've been dealing with my own shit. You know what I'm this, saying? So, it, it, 
this show is one of the main reasons why, like, man, I love about your group, bro. Like, especially with your channel, because it's not just about Raider Nation. You know what I'm saying? You're you're looking out for folks, bud. No, I you know what I mean? And, and and with the shit I've been going through lately, it's just been it's been difficult for me. Yeah. Well, let's talk about it. And you know, uh haven't had the greatest relationship with my baby mama. Didn't have the greatest start to my daughter's relationship. My daughter's mad at me now. Mm -hmm. And uh she don't feel like I'm doing enough. Dirty. And I'm I'm, I'm sitting here trying to trying to build this fucking company for the past couple of years and and it's like everything's crumbling right now. And no matter what I do, no matter how hard I'm fighting, it just keeps going. You still trying, right? Oh, of course. Um, Every day I fight. Brother, let me ask you a question, you, brother. That's all you can do. Go, go ahead, brother. You ever uh you ever you ever heard of the phrase quicksand? Yes, sir. Perfect, Perfect analogy. Yeah. That that's that's what you're going through right now, bro. You're you're in a quicksand, you're fighting so hard, and the more you fight, you feel like you're sinking. Sometimes we gotta stand still. You know what I mean? Sometimes we just yeah. gotta stand still. You know what I mean? And let and let the world come to you instead of sometimes going out to try and get the world. Sometimes you gotta let it come to you. You know what I mean? The daughter your daughter's situation, bro, that's your blood. It'll work itself It'll out. As itself painful out. as it as it is when you start going through it, because when I first came on the show, I told Docs the whole reason I came on the show because my daughter wasn't talking to me. My daughter literally just started talking to me. You know That's what I mean? Exactly what's going on me right I, now. I, I, I haven't talked to my daughter since January. So trust me, bro. My and, baby and, girl's in my world, bro. bro. Bro, mine is too. That's my first. Bro. That's my first love. My first everything. But guess what? They grow. They grow up. They get older. They, they have to go through their their bumps and bruises like we did, right? I've reached out. She's I've still female, out. man. I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. Hey, hey, hey. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, but like, bro, yeah. like, it, it's just real shit. Like, I've reached out to my daughter. Tried. Yeah. No response. Uh, we can't. At the end of the day, you still have to. You have to mentally be ready for every day because if you're not, that relationship can't grow eventually, right? You have to be right now so she can be right later. If you're not, see that. Not gonna work. That, that, that's where I kind of I kind of feel like where I'm faltering because like daily once I get up throughout the day I, I'm ready for it. Yeah. It's when I get home. Yeah. It's when bro, I'm sitting here. But, but and, you know why, bro? Because everything that everything you, I'm trying it's running through my fucking head. Yeah. It's that quiet time that could be the worst time when you're when you're in your own head and you're out out in the big to me being out and about is the easy part of the day. You know it's what's crazy? Home. Alone in my own thoughts. Shout shout to my brother B. He he and I'm yeah. gonna put this out yeah. here. I know that B wouldn't come on here and talk about it, but I'm gonna say it because that's my brother and I love him. B and Stu, you know the story with B with Brandon, uh, what he went through back home. Yeah, his trigger, yeah, yeah. his trigger right now, he's going through a transitional phase too, right? Where you know, with his daughters and his girl that he was with for uh seven years, right? The yeah. only place he can't go is home because he struggles with that. His family yep. moved out. Yep. They're, they're elsewhere. He still sees them. You know, he still goes through. But it's at home right. where all that time lies on his head where he's like, I can't be here. Like, like if you guys seen B out here not too long ago, he was out here with me for a few weeks because he had to get the fuck away. Because even in his own home, he felt like he wasn't at home. He felt like he was hell. So, Paz, you're yeah, not the yeah, only yeah. brother that goes through that. Trust me. But yep. understand this. This is why I had to hit you up, man. Yeah. This is why I had to hit you up because at that point, if I didn't hit nobody up, I wouldn't fucking be here, bro. Yeah, but but, I, but so I, I had to. You know what I'm saying? But, but, like, but bro, but but I love that, right? And you know what's so funny? You hit me yesterday, and I didn't respond yet because I knew today I was gonna I, change. I was gonna change everything around. And I sent. Remember, I, I hit you up. I said, "Hey, bro." We're doing the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. I already knew exactly what I already knew exactly what I was what I was gonna do. So I made sure that I put this show together today because I hit up Stu this morning. I said, "Hey, I want to do something special tonight." Stu didn't even know what the fuck I was talking about. So you were a big part of why I did this. And guess what happened today, Paz? 
you helped Jonathan come over his fear of coming on the show, right? Because this show wouldn't have spawned. It wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for you. Uh, same thing with on Jonathan's end. It wouldn't have happened. You know what I mean? It, 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 it's, it's the same way. A lot of people in here are, are, are saying that they needed this show today. Guess what? You reaching out to me and saying I'm struggling is allowing everyone else to come in and speak their truths as well. So, brother, like you made a big, big impact, not on just Raider Nation, but just a shit on humanity itself today because there's people in here that's not Raider fans that are that are telling their story. And I love yeah. it. I love, this, show, this show isn't just about Raider Nation. You know, you know and, that, and that's crazy because before I got disconnected, I was reading a lot of the comments before I came on, you know what I'm saying? And I felt the love, you know what I'm saying? Even if y'all weren't Raider fans, man, I appreciate y'all. That shit meant hey, a lot look. to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, Definitely. But you know what I think you hey, need to do, Pop? I fight hard for my kid, man. Hey, but bro, 99.9% .9 of motherfuckers don't. So you know what? Respect, my brother. Keep fighting. And you know what you need to do? You need to find an outlet like I did. I've been through this situation before with my daughter. The gym, workout, find something productive. Look, Dirty, man. Dirty was going through some shit. Guess what Dirty did? He called me. He said, I'm going to start my own YouTube channel. And now he's slowly but surely <laughs> going to where he wants to go. I'm saying, like, like Dirty's channel is growing every day. You know what I'm saying? Stu going through some shit, started his shit now. He's throwing, he's doing 12 hour fucking lives. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Therapy. Therapy. Yeah, Got you know motherfuckers up all it, night. This is why I'm starting to practice my tattooing. You feel me? <laughs> hey, but, hey, but look, there you go. Quick. There you go. Hey, Real quick, you know, you so, you know what's dope? I promise you, brother, if I'm anywhere near you, where, where you live, I promise you, I mean this. If I'm anywhere in the same area as you, I want you to practice on, on, on me. Just something small, though. Something small. All right, man. All right. I, but hey, Paul, small. I feel, I no, no, I feel it. I yeah, feel it. Paul, I don't fuck. know you. Go I don't ahead, know you. bro. Go ahead, man. But uh, real quick, a uh, few minutes ago, you made a uh, you made a comment that kind of hurt me a little bit, my friend. When you said uh, if the show Go wasn't ahead. here, you wouldn't you wouldn't still be around, right? I, w I want you to think about something really quickly, man, because I'm not trying to downplay your situation. But if you take your life, does it I wasn't make thinking situation? about everybody when I said oh, okay. that. Okay, okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure. So I was going to say, that doesn't I make the situation you, I know, better. I know where you're going, you know? bro, and I appreciate that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right, no, I was right, going to say, man, sometimes, right. you know what I'm sometimes we go too far off to the side, you know what I mean? And we don't think that that's it. We think that situation makes everything better, but it, it doesn't. It hurts the people here that we leave behind more than the situation that we could have, you know what I mean, fixed in, in the long run. So, you know, if I took that the wrong right. way, I do apologize. Pause but for whoever's it, listening that's nah, thinking nah, about it, 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 it don't make the situation the no better. Way, you know hey, pause, hey, hey, pause. Let me ask uh, you this real quick. Outside of your family, right? We all know our families always make us all happy. What makes you happy outside of your daughter? <laughs> what makes you happy outside of your family? I, I, I want to know real quick. Cooking and art. Okay. Being okay. an egg chef. Okay. Being a uh, artist. Yeah. Those are probably the only artist. two things. Uh, uh, you drawings and stuff know, like that. Helping kids, yeah. coaching kids. Okay. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. Are, are you doing? Are you doing any of that right now? I'm trying to get into my uh, my ex Don't girlfriend's try. Uh, Don't coaching try. Look, squad, look, look. but. <laughs> do, do this. Do, do, do this. Do this. We'll see, we'll see what it. got their own team. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you this. First the of coaches, all, don't operate. That's don't hard operate to get through, into. Don't operate through an ex girlfriend right now with the shit you're going through. Yeah. What you, what you need to do is go reach out, find some other avenues because trust and believe there's some there's some little league pee wee things around that would love to have right. you. Uh, there's there's some schools that would probably take you in in a heartbeat to help you. you know I'm saying with, with your cooking and get you back into that. There's so many other avenues that you can go down right now in order to get your shit right. You know what I mean? To, to, well, no, I, I probably could have picked those words better. It isn't about my ex or her kid. It was about getting into uh, coaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I was I'm just trying to get into Wood and Vaca High and Vacaville. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, all I'm saying is. There's so much you can do in, in this time, right? Like, you love cooking? Guess what? Whatever money you make, while all this shit is going on in your life, try some new recipes. Try some new things. Um, 
Oh man, that's so, yeah, all I do. <laughs> what's your favorite recipe? What's your what's your favorite recipe? Or what's your favorite I don't dish? Have a favorite recipe because they're all, all my favorite. Okay. Man. So you must be fire. So do you do you have it a don't matter if it's sea, seafood, pork, it could be beef. Don't do, matter. Do, do you what's have a specialty? Do you have an Instagram page? I do, but I don't be putting my cooking on it. You need to create a cooking IG page. You need yeah. to post pictures of your food. I'm telling you now, bro, get that out there. So yeah. people, because the more people that see it, the more people that acknowledge it, the more you're going to want to be like, damn. And I just said, I'm going to try to copy it. Right, you, right. If you have kind of food on there, I'm going to be like, let me let me see what I'm, I don't do recipes, but I'm going to take what you do. Right, right. Because that, that's how I make, that's how I cook. If you, if you put food and tell me that you made meatballs this way, I mean, I'm a the, the only thing I've ever posted my food and stuff on is uh, Facebook. That's uh, mm -hmm. Ramon Paz. <laughs> and me and OG Daniel are working on a cooking show, bro. You know what I mean? Feel free to, yeah, to reach man. out to us and, and, and come be a special guest. Hey, hey, I, I, mean? I gotta say, oh, I gotta oh, say this. Show, I'm gonna have to get your info and shit. Yeah, I, I gotta say this publicly real quick too while, while my brother Dirty is. Is, is on the show. My brother reached out to me. He said, we good? I need you to know, bro, we're always going to be good. Okay? There's never going to be an instance in this lifetime where me and you ain't good. Um, I'm going through a transitional period right now where I just want to focus on me, do what I'm doing. I'm not going to be bouncing around a, on a, a lot of different right. pages and doing certain things. I'm focused on me because I started seeing, and this is not you, this is not Stu, it's not directed to anybody on here. But yeah. a lot of the stuff that I've done, it wasn't reciprocated, right? So, yeah. so yeah. I realized with all the hard work and everything that I put out there, it's not, it doesn't come back tenfold, which I shouldn't have expected that anyway. You know what I mean? And, and, and well, to be honest, I you, mean, I I, a, a lot of fans from other pages seem too conflicted with the situations. And yeah, that and wasn't it, what you were trying to do. No, and I don't want to divide anybody. I, like, if I don't fuck with somebody, oh well, that doesn't mean I don't want you to fuck, not fuck with them. That's not how this works. Right. You know what I'm saying? No. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, we're always good, brother. That, that's that's all I wanted to put out there. We're, we're I just want, you know, right. as I told you this morning, bro. You know what I mean? I appreciate everything you've done for me. You know what I mean? Bringing me on to the first mental health. You know what I mean? So when I reached out to you, you know what I mean? It was just to simply let you know, you know. Hey, I'm going live. Stop through, brother. I got nothing but love for you. You know what I mean? And I appreciate you. I ain't never nice. been one to ride another man's coattails. You know that. Oh, no, you know what I mean? So, right, right, right. I, you know, I, well, like I, I, I said, I, that wasn't directed to you, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I, I know. Or, or, or OG, because I know OG's been really quiet. OG ain't been saying shit to me. You know what I'm saying? So I just want people to understand it's nothing towards my people that's been day ones that I've been bringing on here. It's nothing against yeah. anyone. It's just me. Focusing on what I have to do because my mental health, this show, my mental As health. As I told you, it would yeah. be unfair right. for you to do anything else but to take care of yourself. Yeah. My mental you health right I mean? now is at, is at, is at its all-time high. And I need this as much as Paz needs this. I need this as much as Diego needs this. Stu, Squid, you dirty. It's the same shit. Everybody in the chat, thank you, thank you. No, thank you for being here. I'll be talking I mean, to myself. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, bro. Exactly. Like, like, like with, with this... This whole thing, man, like hearing everybody's story in the uh, in the comments, everybody that's come on, man, it, it it helps because there are different certain aspects when it comes to depression that everybody can take from. Yeah. And it helps, especially when you hear something better to help you do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Definitely. And it's and like me, like that. Back yeah. in the day, I used to do a fucking uh, a barbecue every Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Get back to Go it. Homeboys, people other than that out of town, just winning it over time. You I, know, no, I, no. we all have our different our different things, right? Yep. So a lot of people in the chat may say yep. Jonathan's problems ain't really no problems because they think that his is minute compared to theirs, right? Some people Correct. say some stupid shit like that. To me. That doesn't you you don't grasp the concept of mental health then. You know what I'm saying? You don't understand right. what this is. It's easy for you for, understand what everybody else is going through. Yeah, like like it doesn't matter whose is so-called worse and this, this, and that. Bro, the one that you see a lot is is, is like Robin, celebrities that go through mental health, and we think, oh, they got money. What, what problems do they have? 
Yeah. When you're when right, that, exactly. Like, me being someone that like got it beaten to my head, I know what to do. I was in the black. Yeah. When you're in that fucking yeah. situation, you do not. I'm. You do not see shit. I, I thankfully had people in my life that said, "Hey, this is what you got to do, bro." And they looked out for me because they noticed it. They saw the signs. Yeah. And when you're I in it, pull you back from that. Pit. Yeah, it, exactly. And it, and it takes other. It takes this to be there for you. The whole I've said it over and over again. Suicide and mental health does not give a fuck who you are, purple, gay, straight, or black. If you yep. got a dollar in your account or you got a billion in your account, <laughs> gang beggar are the biggest square. It, it no fucking matter. Here, <laughs> that's what's so scary about this is it yep. takes everybody finding what works for you. I know what works for me. I'm gonna tell you, but Dirty got something different. Graph got different. Stu, Jay, like everybody handles it different. Take everybody's information and pieces and, and make that, it that, that, that's your situation. Thing. Let me, like, let me ask real quick. Playing from everybody and make yeah. it home. Yep. Let me ask real quick, man. Diego, what's up, brother? What's good? What's going on with you, man? Um, not much. Um, you know, I was just trying to do some homework earlier, but I just have a lot on my mind right now. I'm going through stress of like, you know, figuring out where I'm gonna go to school next year mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um. Right, right. I I just got you know allowed to go back to work because uh, my sister got COVID a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. and like they had me stay out uh, longer from work because like you know we both work at and out and because of it. Yeah. And I wasn't even sick, so I was like fuck because I'm gonna be staying at home longer than her, and sometimes I just don't want to be home because like I don't know. But, but like I have see. the option of, of staying here in Sac and going you're to young, Sac right? Next Diego, year. How old are you? Let everybody know how old you are. I'm 19. Don't rush the process. Don't rush the process. So for you, like like you said, keep I don't keep want... the process at an equal level, man. Don't don't go beyond what you don't need to, man. To be night to be 19, bro, and have a job. And have a have shelter, and hey, that's a beautiful thing, man. I mean, when I was yeah. nineteen, I was yep. sleeping on light, I was sleeping on light rails and shit. Yeah, and, and, and you any can't, girl you can't and, take on the burden of everybody at that age, man. Yeah, so my brother, you 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 were on the right path, on the right path. That's a good that's a good uh, issue to have. To, to I'm trying to figure out what school I'm gonna go to. That's a beautiful problem to have, man, because you have options. A lot of people don't have options, right? A lot of people don't have them. So to be able to have those kind of Facts. options, that's a beautiful thing, man. It really is, bro. I, I, look, I, I can't tell you how to deal with your stress, and I, I wouldn't want to do that. But yeah. I, I think, just like we said with Jonathan, I think I think you're blessed. I think that you know that. I think that you you know you're going to be okay. It's, this is just a moment in time, and you're going to move forward from it. Um, you know, the good thing is you have a job to go back to. I know a lot of people probably in the chat right now that don't have a job. You know, what I mean, a lot of people are stressing. My my wife lost her job in the pandemic. Has been looking for one for almost two years now. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. For me, my mental health kicked into gear because I left my job to do this full time so I can be at home. You know what I'm saying? So we all have our own things how we deal with certain things, right? But I, I just think, my brother, I think that you you you're a good kid. D- people don't know Diego. I, he's had my he had my number for a while. He texts me and we we chop it up. Uh, good, good dude's been rocking with me since day one on the channel. Um, I think you don't have any worries, brother. I'm gonna be honest. I think you're gonna be okay. You have every right in the world to stress. Uh, like we said before, we don't know. Everybody has their different state of mental health and where they are with things. Um, I just think, brother. Sometimes I never went through the college uh, situation, so I, I can't even imagine how stressful that is. You know what I mean? Like I. I never went through that. I got kicked out of high school sophomore year and I was done. <laughs> so, like, I don't know the, the hassle and all that. Like, I couldn't even imagine what y'all got going on. Hey, pause. I love you, brother. I love you, brother. Hey, hit me up. Hey, what are your uh what are your school options? Um, so um I could basically stay here in SAC, live at home, um, and like you know, go to SAC State next year. But I mean, that would obviously be like a lot more um, to call, but like uh, much better, like financially, especially you know, 
because like from what everyone's been telling me you don't want like you know college loans um like you know creeping up on your ass as you're like 35 or something like that and you still have to pay them off and stuff yeah and um I I'm very grateful for my dad who like he's willing to help me pay for like part of it right now. And um blessing. Yeah, yeah. Uh but I just feel like I I need to leave my house uh to kind of like explore the world a little bit, like get to know myself better and yep. to be in a different environment. Brother. So I'm gonna, I'm going to tell you this. That last statement you just made you have your mind made up. You understand yep. what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm 42, my guy. So I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something right now. Your second statement was short, it was sweet, and it was to the point. You're tired of where you are. Yeah. So you know I know about sack, bro. I know all about sack. I want to get the hell out. I yeah. want to get the hell out of there too. <laughs> Don't plain. block your blessings and don't it's hurt yourself. Because <laughs> in the long run, in the long run, you'll regret not making the decision you truly want to make. Mm-hmm. And that's going to make your mental health even worse. Yeah. Right? Because we can't, we can't rewind clocks and we can't turn back time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So my, my worst decision, the worst decision I made was uh, not choosing my first, my first place, which was USC. I chose mm-hmm. to go to SMU, and I got yeah. in a whole lot of trouble within three weeks of being at SMU, bro. I never even seen the field. That ended my college career because mm-hmm. I didn't choose what I really wanted to choose. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? So I ended up going to community colleges and things of that nature. And then I just let football go all in general after that. Mm-hmm. So don't block your blessings. You know what I mean? If you don't want to be in – if you don't want to be in SAC, bro – don't stay inside. Chase I'm, I'm your tell, dreams. I'm gonna tell you something and, and, and dirty. That was every word, bro. I hung on to it, bro. Like he spoke more than Freeman facts, bro. But but let me say this though. <laughs> Real talk though, bro. As somebody that was 19, by the time I was 19, I lived in like three different states already. Like I, mm-hmm. I bounced around. I was in Phoenix. Uh, uh, I was doing music, so I was traveling already. Already the world by 19, I had already been in like seven to ten states just doing music. Mm-hmm. I. All that time I used traveling, I couldn't imagine now where I am now. I couldn't imagine not doing that. I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine it. If I would have just sat, sat and, and you have a different life than me, than I did out there. But if I stuck, stuck around in sack and just and just did what I was doing, I would have died, bro. I would have been in jail. You know what I'm saying? Like being able to travel and see just different things outside of the 916 propelled me and made me realize, damn, like there is a whole world outside of this shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you, the good thing is travel a little bit all over so you can see what works for you. You know what I mean? I lived in Atlanta probably, I lived in Atlanta probably four different times. That's my second home for real. Like tr- I lived in every area out there, probably 10, 10 years of my life back and forth. And I don't know why, but I realized it wasn't the place for me, but I kept going back because it was my comfort zone. Right. Cause I knew I didn't want to go back to SAC. That's just my hometown was just off. The, it was just off. I'm not going there. Point blank. Yeah. My son, I'm not going to experience what I experienced. But I found a place like like Dallas. I came here. I made it my home. This is the first time, and I've been here almost five years now. I believe I've not even thought about leaving outside of Vegas because of my business, and that's off the that's off the table now. I'm not going to Vegas. I like where I am. Oh, I, I can do my business from where I am. I can travel to Vegas as much as I want to. You know what I'm saying? I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm definitely cool. But yeah. it, takes, it takes time, bro, for you to to run around. Spend some of that hard-earned money that you got. Because I know right now you're probably blessed enough to not have to pay rent. You know what I mean? Take some of that yeah. money and travel. Go travel. Mm-hmm. Go see some things. Because you're still I guarantee you, I guarantee you, 10 years from now, you'll have at least three homeboys that haven't traveled 20 miles outside of their comfort area. T- take the time to get to know different areas. Because the U.S. is extremely diverse in every state, every city, has different, whole different communities and worlds. Like, with... I mean, I've been on the a little bit, but yeah. uh, I was just up at Squid's neighborhood yeah. this weekend. He hit you know, the whole Seattle's different. It is. Seattle's, Seattle's different. I, I, if you, well, you got me till early next year, but it, 
it is take the time to get around and, and go learn different areas, different cultures. The South is completely different than Sacramento than where I'm from in L, like LA. East Coast, you got actual seasons. Like I didn't know leaves actually changed color. Like I thought that was just a TV thing. <laughs> and then you see them go, oh damn, they're actually changing colors. Like mm-hmm. it, if you can, I definitely recommend, like they're saying, get out and travel and go see what what's out there and what fits you. Because I have Broad New Horizons, my guy. Yeah. Broad New Horizons. He, he, definitely. You were talking a lot. I'm gonna call it sorry. You're it was a lot of fluff in the beginning about the staying in sack and you were trying to convince yourself but uh-huh. when you said that you want to go see something different your mood your mood almost changed your tone of voice was way more secure in that like yeah. Yeah. Motherfucker, yeah. Motherfucker, hey motherfucker, you look like superman you need to move to new york city <laughs> <laughs> my cousins always tell me that i put the little hair down they're like oh you got the little curl <laughs> I'm like, I need to move to New York City and some shit. around my cousins. <laughs> <laughs> and that's yeah. another thing about this whole Raider Nation piece. It ain't hard to find people in different cities. If you really reach out, and I'm not saying, you know, place to see, but at least, like right now, you tell me you're, again, fucking my bad, Dirty. He was up here and I didn't get to hang out with him, but you good. We got people all over the fuck U.S. where if you want somebody, I guarantee somebody in the nation will look out for you. Hey, bro, recommend this place, that place. Like, don't stay away from this neighborhood. Go to that neighborhood. Go eat at this spot. College-wise, that information's out there. It's also how hungry you are to find Take that information. Tours. Take a couple of college tours, my guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what and, I mean? And, Take and, a couple yeah, of college you, tours. Reach out to me on here. I know, look. I know I went through my little shit. I changed my number. I, I, I deleted the uh, Discord. <laughs> so, hey, look, I, I deleted oh, a good. lot of shit <laughs> out of my life. But you know how you you know how to get a hold of me, bro. Like you know. What hey, I mean? hey, I completely understand. I uh, I said it in the chat earlier at the beginning of the year. I I wiped everything of my social media like out of existence in the beginning of the year because yeah. it just got too toxic. Like I, uh, what's it called? I basically deleted my accounts too, so I don't get tempted to go back to it. You know. Yeah. Cause because temptation this kill shit, you. This shit- this shit can be infuriating at times. You know what it feels like sometimes? It feels mm-hmm. like, and this may be too intense, right? But it feels like you're looking through a window and you're watching a family member get their ass whooped. Yeah. But you can't get into the house. Because everybody can talk shit in there. They can do whatever they will watch this. Blah, 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 but you can't do shit, right? <laughs> All you can do is just walk away. Leave it alone. Mm-hmm. That's how the internet is sometimes. Sometimes you're just like, man, you know what? In order for my mental health to stay intact, I got to delete this. I got to delete that. Leave this alone. I had the same phone number for 20 years anyway. It was about that time to change that shit. I got, <laughs> if an ex-girlfriend wanted to get a hold of me, that bitch could have called me. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's just be real. And no, no, disrespect, no disrespect. Problems. <laughs> but, but no, no, that, that, that did not happen because regardless, they know not, they look, they know not to get at me. But I'm just saying. <laughs> but too many people had access to me. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. at some point, you got to just say, you know what? Pump the brakes. I was getting tagged here, tagged here, tagged here, text here, 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 here. And then you realize, what the fuck? I don't have time for anything that's really, really important. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need to focus on me and mine, take care of my responsibilities, do me. And then maybe I can come back at some point and, and maybe create this again and do this again. But at some point, man, you just got to say, this is about me. And, and right say, now, be true to yourself. Like yeah. when Brad Pitt is looking like, doing that shit, Stu. <laughs> Stop, Stu. Like grab logging off what? for a second. That's kind of what I imagined. I was like, cool, grab going through it. Fuck it. He's gonna take care of himself and be good. Like yeah. I, I, I I didn't reach out because I, I know you a little bit, and I was like, whatever, he's gonna handle his shit and be back. Like it, it is what it is. Take care now, of yourself. Now I owe Stu two dollars, man. He's gonna want to kill me, man. Like I, I'm hey, with you. Know, uh, Media shit too. I talked. Uh, I talked to Rage Raider today. All right. Oh. I talked to Rage today. By the way, he wants you to hit him if, when you get a chance. You know, what I mean, he he been looking for you. He, he wants to talk. He was supposed but, to be um, here tonight. I know, I know, I know. But hit him behind the scenes so you can so you can talk to him. You know what I mean? Because he he's got some questions that I you know it ain't my business to bring up on live. You know that, and I never do nothing like that. So that's why I'm letting you know. Just give him a call. 
five minutes. I gotta get in the house and pack. Five, we, we got five of them though, so let's definitely still. But uh, good night, you man. Know, Quit. I love yeah. you, bro. I love you, bro. Thanks for reaching me. Yeah, that's my bedtime. Love right. you, brother. Yes, sir. Take care, oh, my guy down here on the corner, so bro. Life is a uh, life is an adventure, my guy. You understand what I'm saying? You, you're 19. You got the whole world still in front of you. I pray. I hope you still got 60 to 70 years still in front of you, maybe 80 to 100. Definitely. You know what I mean? But life is an adventure, my friend. You know what I mean? Enjoy the ride, bro. Yeah. Just enjoy the ride. Because right now you're getting ready, you're getting ready to go through some years that people wish they could get back right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Me being one of them, I wish I could go back and do college in high school all over again, bro. Knowing what I know now. My turnout would have been completely different. It would have been two NFL stars on here talking right now. But I chose to let my mental health stand in the way when I was younger of not having a father. You know what I mean? I just came to – I won't bullshit you. I just came to grips three weeks ago with the fact that I'm 42 years old and I ain't never had a real friend in my whole life. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I got associates, but I ain't never never had a real friend that – you know, in my whole life, my guy, I just came to grips with that, like maybe two to three weeks ago. You know, what I mean, it weighed, it weighed heavy on me. Was it me or was I just not cut out to be people's friends? And I figured out I got some real friends. Docs is a real friend. I've never met this dude a day, personally a day in my life. But I've hit him and he has been there for me. My wife got to kill me. For 20, 20 to 30 years, bro, they've, they will, they're not there for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So enjoy the enjoy the ride you're getting ready to go on, my friend. And, and don't let it be too heavy for you. And I talked to Dirty. I talked to Stu. Shit, me and Diego in the, in, in the Discord. I talked to you guys more than I even talked to anyone I grew up with. So at the end of the day, man, you know what I mean? Regardless of if we knew each other or not personally, blah, blah, blah. I've met Stu personally. We had a hell of a time. And we got even closer once we met. You know what I mean? Now it's like, you know, you get that once you get that off, once you get that out the way, it's like, this is my guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but like, you say Stu pissed in the sink? Yeah, he pissed in the sink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah and I'm working yeah, on a friendship yeah. with Stu. Behind the scenes, I'm working on a friendship with Stu. Hell yeah. Mental health at its finest. He pissed in the sink. <laughs> hey man, I'm just able, bro. I'm just, you, know, you expect that. You got to expect that. And hey, you tell one of your lives uh, that, that you piss excellence and you shit greatness too. That's right. That's right. <laughs> hey, I know I want to, I will, you know, obviously there was a lot of people and I, I don't want to, you know, have everyone coming at you, but that's no, okay. Like everyone's saying, man, this, this is, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on real quick, real quick. Stu, can I ask you something? It'll be two seconds. I won't be long. Do you, what do you have going on right after this? Nothing. Everyone's asking for you to do the live. Bring it over there. Okay. My wife's about to kill me right now if I don't get off this computer. She came, she came out like this. And I'm gonna tell y'all right now. I'm not black women do this. Hey, my black queen. Oh no, we not we not doing that. We not. Don't doing wait for her to stuff. do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah here, I'll uh, I'll 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 put something together here. Uh, whoever wants to pull up, pull up. Right. Yeah. She came out. She was like, "I'm lady graphic." I said, I said, I said, Crap. I said three minutes. I said three minutes. I said three minutes. Dirty, what are you doing? What do you got going on, Dirty? I'm coming over to your show. Okay. All right, cool. There cool, we cool, go. Cool, and cool. I'm you got my number. Guys. Send me the send me the link through the text. I'm gonna send you my number right now, too, Dirty. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Thank you guys. This to me was a fire ass show. Three hours long. Pause. I know you're backstage. I'm about to get off, but I'm gonna bring you on the next one, my brother. I got you. Keep me posted. Come over to Stu. If you need to talk, come to Stu. Yeah. Or go to hey. Stu. Go to Stu's right now. Go go to Stu's live right now. Let's continue this over there. Um, I'm gonna go pack. Dirty, dirty. Text, text me again for sure. I don't know if I don't know what the fuck. I can't. I don't know what, what where the fuck it is. Yeah. Stu's gonna do a 15 hour <laughs> uh, mental health show, you guys. So. Oh yeah. Hey, and a heads up, everyone. My pops is gonna be in town tomorrow. So I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Big Stu on the show sometime tomorrow. Ah, oh, that's fire. But that's hey, fire. if y'all think I'm crazy, wait till this motherfucker gets on. I appreciate you guys, man. Shout out to the chat. I appreciate all you guys for coming in. I love you guys. Stu always leaves. He doesn't know how to say bye. This motherfucker always <laughs> he about to choke up and shit. That's what he be doing. Uh 
But I just want to say sh shout out to you guys, man. It was a great show because of y'all. Shout out to my big bro, Dirty, for coming on, as always. A uh, little bro, thank Diego, thank you for coming on and sharing your story with me, brother. We'll definitely bring you on again here soon. Um, I'm going to be doing a coffee and convo. Oh, you know what? Not tomorrow. I got, I got a bunch of shit I need to do. I'm going to do a coffee and convo Saturday morning when I get to Atlanta. And um, we're going to go from there. I'll probably end up doing a fan show sa uh, Saturday night once, once I get to the A. But uh, with that said, fun, guys, brother. thank you guys for coming on. Everybody that shared their testimony tonight. I appreciate you guys. I love y'all. Go to Stu's page right now. Stuart Schweiger on YouTube. That's the after party. And I'm going to sneak off in a little while. Come pull up on y'all. Okay. So with that being said, man, love you guys. I'm out, man. Go.